Thank you, Jesus. It says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. It says, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Till the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Lord, we praise you and we worship you because you are a holy God. We thank you for your holiness, Lord Jesus, that you've given us an opportunity to partake of, Lord God. Father, it's only because of you that we can stand and we can call on your name. It's only because of your righteousness, Lord God, that we can live and be justified by you, Father God. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for every lost soul this morning, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that somehow, some way, Lord Jesus, you'll be able to open their hearts, Lord God, and that they'll desire to reach up to you, Lord God, and grab hold to your unchanging hand, Lord, knowing that they cannot do it, Lord God. They cannot make it without you, Jesus. Lord God, we curse the spirits of pride, Lord God, over the unbelievers, Lord God. Father, that thing stands up, Lord God, and try to fight you back, Lord God. But I curse you, pride. I curse you everything, the spirit of death. I curse you because you want to keep them to take them to hell. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I curse every insane spirit, Lord God. Every spirit, Lord God, that want to keep the souls of the people back from you, Lord God. Everything, Lord God, anything, Father, whatever it is today, Lord God, we pray against it, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we ask that you use us today as your battle axes and your weapons of war, Lord God. Father God, we humble ourselves before you, Lord God, today, Father. Lord, not knowing anything, Lord God, not even having any ability, Lord God. Because everything, all the strength in us, Lord God, it comes from you, Lord. We cannot take, Lord God, any credit for anything, Lord God. We are but dust, Lord God, and our lives are but a vapor, Lord Jesus. And Father, when you say it doesn't exist anymore on this earth, Lord God, it will not, Father God, just by a mere spoken word. So, Lord, these lives are fragile, Lord God, more fragile than what we know, Lord God. Father God, sometimes we raise up and think we can do things, Lord God, but we cannot, Lord God. It's nothing in ourselves that we can do, Lord. Our minds, Lord God, are delicately balanced, Lord God, by chemicals, Lord Jesus, that you allow this body, Lord God, to flow in this body, Lord God. Father God, if we didn't know, Lord God, that we couldn't hear anything, Lord God, we wouldn't know to turn up the knobs on the volume to be able to hear, Lord God. Father, when we're driving, Lord God, our minds are like calculating computers, Lord God, making the adjustments of velocity and speed, Lord God, when to turn, make that left turn into traffic, Father God. Oh God, Lord, we, it's nothing about us, Lord God, that is great, Lord God, that we have done. You made us, Lord God. You said fearfully and wonderfully have you made us, Lord Jesus. And Father, I repent every time when I looked up, Lord God, thought I could do something, Lord God. Father God, I can't do nothing, Lord God. It's not anything about me. I can't do nothing, Lord God, without you, Lord. Lord God, this flesh is as grass, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we yield to you today, Lord God. 
We ask that you live through us, Lord God, and we're sorry, Lord God. When we thought we had a mind to use, Lord God, to calculate, Lord God, anything, Father God, whether it was to do good or to do bad, Lord. Father, we repent today, Lord God, and we ask you to forgive us, Lord Jesus. When we thought ill of people that we should not have, Lord God, when we said things about folks, Lord God, we should not have, Lord God, using our minds to make decisions, Lord God. Everything, Lord God, we're to seek you daily, Lord God, and ask and let your will be done in us and through us that you may be glorified, Father God. We can't even decide to get up in the mornings unless you get us up, Father God. Oh God, you give us the strength to turn over, Lord God. You give us the strength to walk to the bathroom and to relieve ourselves, Lord God. Oh God, I praise you today, Lord God, for your mercy, Lord God. Have mercy upon your people, Lord God, in your church, Lord, that we'll look to you and we'll humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Oh, God, we'll humble ourselves before you, Lord God. We know nothing, Lord God. There's nothing great about us, Lord God, because we can't even talk about sinners, Lord God, because not too long ago we were sinners, Lord Jesus. We're just learning about your way, Lord God, your ways and who you are, Lord God. Still got a long way to go, Father God. We hadn't made it yet, Lord God. We hadn't made it into glory yet, Lord God. You said in the end we shall be saved, Lord God. We got a long race to run, Lord God. But we better run it in humility, Lord God. Low running, Lord God. Lots of praying, Lord God. And giving of ourselves, Lord God. And sacrificing, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you today, Jesus. And we lift you up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. On this fast, Lord God, bring us down, Lord God, to humble ourselves before you, Lord God. To humble ourselves and to lay out before you prostrate, Lord God. Father, I bind every situation, Lord God, that would try to come up, Lord God, to keep us from meditating on you, Lord. We bind it in the name of Jesus. No family members, Lord God, nothing will happen to them where we got to engage our minds in over there, Lord. For the next 15 days on this fast, Lord God, we bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. No sickness, no disease, Lord God. No accidents, Lord God. No lack, Lord God. Let us be able to come before you and lay out before you, Father God. Yes. Keeping you on our minds all the time, Lord God. During this time, Lord God, of fasting and prayer, truly teach us what sacrificial living is all about on this fast, Lord God. Giving of ourselves, Lord God, when we say we're tired and we can't go any further, stretch us out, Lord God. Stretch us out, Lord Jesus, to be able to do this thing, Lord, the way you called it to be, Lord. We've been selfish in so many ways, Lord God. Oh, God, we're sorry, Lord God, and we repent today, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, for saying, Lord God, when we can't do anymore, what we're not going to do, because we got a few coins now, Lord God, and we think we can make decisions, Lord God, of how, how to do things, Lord God, when to do it and what not, never asking you, Lord Jesus, who we say is the Lord of our lives, Lord God. Never petitioning you about anything, Lord God, but thinking we can just go and do, go and do, go and do, go and do without asking you, Lord Jesus. How would it please you, oh God? What would you have us to do, Lord Jesus? How would you have us to do it? Or if you would have us to do it, Lord God? No matter how good it may sound or seem, Lord, asking you, Father God, what is your will for this day, Lord God? How do I fit into your day, Lord God? Not you fit into my day, but how do I fit into your day, Lord God? What's your perfect plan, Lord God, and will today that I may fit into your day today, God? Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord God. Everything you've given us, Lord God, is because of you, Father. Nothing we can have done, Lord God, that we even deserve it, Lord God. But Lord, you thought enough, Lord God, to bring us into this life for your glory, for your glory, Lord God, that you may be exalted, oh God. And Lord, we lift you up, Lord God, and we thank you. And we praise you, Lord God, for every day, for every hour, Lord God, for every minute, Lord God, and every second that you allowed us to be here, Lord. When we finish this race, Lord God, when we finish this race, let it have been pleasing in your sight, Lord God. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. 
on this fast, Lord God, that you have chosen. Let us give, Lord God, be givers, Lord God, as you call forth to us to give, according to Isaiah 58, Lord God. Please, Lord, we pray for every person that will attend the conference, Lord. We pray for those, Lord God, that are vacillating, Lord God, trying to make up their minds. And Lord, because their mates don't want to come, they've held up, Lord Jesus. Oh God, I ask you to put a fire upon them today, Lord God. That they ask you, what is your will, oh God, for me to do? Because Lord, you, it's not your will that we allow somebody else to hold us back, Lord God. From feasting, Lord God, before your Father. But Lord, we ask you today that you have your way today, Father God. So many times, Lord God, we're sidetracked because of somebody else. Lord God, I like what Derek Prince said, Lord God. We better get before you because the time is going to come. We won't be able to seek you, Lord. But you've given us mercy and grace to be able to seek your face right now, Lord. And we better hide the words in our hearts, Lord God, that when those times come, Lord God, we will not sin against you, Lord God. Because you, we made you our everything, Lord God. And because we love you, we want to be before you. Choices have to be made, Lord God. To lead those behind you already showed it to us in, our, in your word plainly. There'll be two sleeping in a bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two grinding in the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Five wise virgins, five foolish virgins. Five didn't have all, five did. Five weren't filled with the Holy Ghost and five were. Five were obedient and five were disobedient. Open our eyes, Lord God, and teach us to listen. You told us to remember Lot's wife. She looking back for those children she left over there in Sodom. Sodomites. When you've given her a way out, Lord God. Told her to keep her eyes on you, Lord God, and to walk along with her husband, Lord Jesus. That was leading them because he was following the, your messengers, Lord Jesus. But she looked back. She didn't make it with them, Lord God. Remember, Lord God, remind us of Lot's wife, Lord Jesus. In every situation, Lord God. This road, Lord God, that we're traveling, this journey, Lord God, is not for the faint at heart, Lord God, but it's for the courageous. It's for those, Lord God, who will believe you, Lord Jesus. And go forward, Lord God, because you are our God. You are our living God. And we thank you that you lead us and guide us according to your will, Lord God. And Father, we praise you for it today, Lord. Many will be left, Lord God, because they're looking to a mate that ain't going. Many will be left. But all a woman wants to see is a man that will take a stand and stand at his authority. Then she'll follow him. She used to a whip and being punked out because she punked him out. And Lord, I tell you the truth. Help us, Lord God, today, women today. Today is Mother's Day, Lord. But Father God, you bet on everything, Lord God, in us that don't look like you today. Make it Mother's Day today, Lord God. Purge and cleanse, Lord God. Purge and cleanse, Father God. So that we can be everything you called us to be. Learning how to nurture and how to heal and how to comfort. Lord Jesus, stop being so hard and so big mouth, Lord God. Every word you said you're going to bring into judgment, Lord. Every word. And Father, we thank you today, Jesus. We're on a mission, Lord God. And we got to win this battle, Lord God. We got to win it, Lord Jesus. But we pray for those that are looking back and looking around and don't know whether they want to go or come or stay. Lord God, but it's time, Lord God, to make up our minds. Whom will we choose to serve today, Lord God? Will it be God or man, Lord God? Every way, Lord God, every place, everywhere we have to make a decision, whom will we choose? Whether it be God or man. And Father God, the choice is ours. 
whom will we choose today? And Father, we thank you for it today, Lord God. We glorify you and we lift up your holy name, Lord God. But we pray for our brothers and our sisters, Lord, because we want them to be purged and purified, Lord God. We think we got a long time. We sit around a lot of times and get into the wrong spirit and allow the, then the devil come in and start telling you all kind of mess. And then you go off with it and then you find yourself in a greater mess because he is a deceiver. He perverts the airwaves. He wants to keep you bound and captive in your mind and in your soul so he can take you to hell and he'll have every right because you listen to the wrong voice. Keep us, Lord God, on this fast. Purify our minds and our souls and that we're not double-minded, Lord. And that our decisions, Lord God, are based on the rock, the solid rock, Lord God, the sure foundation. And Father, we thank you for it right now, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. We will stand up, Lord God, and give you the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise your holy name, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us into the presence of the Lord today. We thank you, Father, that you will accept, Lord God, the offering of praise and worship unto your holy name. Lord, we thank you that you do a work in us, Lord. We're here on your altar, Lord God, to do as you will, Lord. Not our will, but let your will be done, O oh God. And Father, we bless your holy name today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, how's everybody doing today? Hope everything's going well thus far. I want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. I hope that you have a, a good day day of uh, recognition as mothers because that's a heavy task to be somebody's mama. That's rough. And uh, there's a lot of responsibility connected with being a mother. So we want to take time to honor and uh, recognize the mothers who have been given the responsibility of nurturing these children and raising them up in the admonition and fear of the Lord. All right, before we get into the message for today, let's get into the announcements real fast and then we'll get going here. First of all, we always tell you about books to read in, o in order to enhance your spiritual life and to help you grow in grace. First book we'll tell you about is The Marriage Bed by Frank Hammond. The Marriage Bed by Frank Hammond. The question asked on the cover of the book is, can the marriage bed be defiled? Can the marriage bed be defiled? You know, people talk about the marriage bed is undefiled, but is that true in all cases? Can you defile your marriage bed? Time to find out the truth about it because you can't do anything in the marriage bed and think that God is just going to see you as some kind of a chaste, honorable, dignified person. Can the Marriage Bed Be Defiled by Frank Hammond? Good book. Get a copy of this on Amazon.com. It's a cheap book. Short little read to it just addresses the fact that you are not lawful doing any and everything in the marriage bed. Can the marriage bed be defiled? Frank Hammond, Amazon.com. The other book, The Organic Gospel, written by myself and Maisha Hunter. The Organic Gospel details the fact that the gospel is organic. It is sown and grown in you organically. So the Bible says in Matthew 13 that the soul sows the word. He plants the word in the soul and in the heart. And out of the inner man, a transformation takes place. God births the spirit man to use the spirit as a conduit to redeem the soul and take possession of it. What was strayed away from God and what made man contrary to God was his soul strayed away. His soul began to entertain other words that made man a rebel against God. So that's what happens when you fall. When you fall into sin, you're listening to other inputs that are make, that's making your soul contrary to God. And most people walk around like that all day long. That's the, the I won't call it the normal state, but it's the state you find most human beings in. They obey dictates given to their souls 
walk after those dictates and they believe somehow they're normal. When in fact, when you're led by your five carnal senses, you're abnormal. You should be led from the inner man and your spirit. The Bible says as men as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If your soul is leading you, if your five carnal senses dictate to you reality, you're in a bad state. The Satan is manipulating you all day long and you think it's normal and you think your reaction to circumstances was valid when in fact you just reacted to the input from the carnal worldly realm of the devil and it will always make it contrary to the will of God. So the organic gospel works this way. He plants the seed in you. Your spirit man then begins to process that word and it begins to amalgamate into you as another kind of creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And as this new seed in you begins to germinate and grow, it begins to take your soul over. The Bible says, in your patience possess ye your soul. As that spirit man begins to expand his borders, as he in, ingests that word. So you've got to keep the word going in in order for the growth process to take place. Anything that grows organically must be fed. You feed the spirit, and at the expense of the soul, the spirit man will expand his borders and take you over and change the way you think, and you'll be normal again. We're, as, we're actually right now rescuing people from insanity. People have been driven insane. Why are they insane? They took the world's inputs, ingested those inputs, digested them, and the world grew in them organically. <laughs> So the nature changed because the world expanded in their minds and now the insane thoughts are accepted as normal. The world is insane. The debates you hear are insane. The music you hear is coming from insanity. Drugs, alcohol, pornography. These are the ingested foods of the insane people. See, the devil provides what? A restaurant to eat at. He's got an insane carnal creation that's mad and crazy, so he provides inputs to that insanity so that thing stays big and strong and you eat it all day. So you stay in front of a cell phone, a TV, on a, on, in front of a, a, a movie showing pornography, listening to boobs on the TV talk all day, Oprah and The View and The Real, all this dumb junk, the Housewives of Atlanta, Housewives of LA, Housewives of New York, the Braxtons, the Kardashians. See, that's the devil providing what? A plate of food to this soulish, crazy creation that he, in, that he cooked up. He's got to feed that thing for the thing to stay alive. When you cut off the food, the thing will begin to die. You change where you eat. You change by starving the old man to death and feeding the new man so that organic life will take you over and change you. Church folks and religious folks spend all day with a carnal mind sitting up, evaluating junk, but there's no change, apparent. And the frustration comes in when you sit here and you know what needs to be done and you begin to do it, and you find out the masses are still trapped in carnality thinking it's spiritual. So you got to basically data dump everything and everybody, stop discussing all this junk, and just go to God yourself and don't allow anybody to drag you into the realm of carnality. You got to grow for you, you have got to go for you. I mean, you can individually control what you do and you can't control anything else. The Bible talks about growing in grace and ever increasing faith is all organically accomplished as you starve the old to death and you feed the new. That's an individual choice. That's why I always call it an individual affair that cannot be faked. Nobody knows what you eat every day. Nobody knows what you ingest. You know, we can trace whether or not you eat a lot of fat because you get fat. So that tells me and tells everybody where you eat and how, what you eat. The fat's going to show up. Carnality will show up. If you're carnal, you can't think spiritual thoughts because you're carnal. And the Bible says the carnal mind is the enemy of God in Romans chapter 8. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So all you got to do is watch the carnal mouth open up out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth will speak, and you'll know what they're eating. They eat carnal, worldly, fleshly junk all day. So the only thing that can come out of their mouths is carnal, worldly, 
fleshly junk. If you want to change, the organic gospel will help you. Available at www.theorganicgospel.net www.theorganicgospel.net It's an individual affair. You can control the plate of food in front of you. You can ingest what's necessary to grow the nature of Christ out of you to change you. That's as far as you can take it. Every man must bear his own burden. You work out your salvation for yourself with fear and trembling, the Bible says. Those two books available, The Organic Gospel and The Marriage Bed and uh, how it can be defiled. Get a copy of both of those, it will help you grow. Next thing, remember the prayer line every night, prayer line every night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that number is 641-715-3670. 641-715-3670, the prayer line. Every night, 9 o'clock p.m., Monday through Sunday night. 641-715-3670. The access code is 409-367. 409-367. Next thing. The conference coming now is coming like a freight train. Now tomorrow is the 15th of the month. And so the conference is coming down the track real fast. It's just 16 more days. The hotel did extend the discounted hotel rate, so you can still get your reserve rooms if you call down there and reserve your rooms. Still people registering now. It's about 90 people registered thus far as the conference is rapidly approaching. June 1st through June 4th at the Hammock Beach Resort down in Palm Coast, Florida, about 28 miles north of Daytona Beach, Florida. Going to go down to engage a lot of different avenues as far as how the devil is making inroads into society, preparing to establish the kingdom of the Antichrist. The devil has to confront Christ with the antithesis of Christ, which is the Antichrist, and he's well on his way to establishing a foothold to build a platform for his master manipulator, the Antichrist. So you gotta be aware, you gotta know what to avoid, because this thing is going to be so deceptive that folks are going to look at the Antichrist and call him Jesus Christ. The mind is going to be blown by the Antichrist because he's coming as a knight in shining armor to do good. Remember, there are two white horses in Revelation. The first ho white horse rider comes with a bow in his hand. That's the Antichrist. The second white horse rider comes with a two-edged sword protruding out of his mouth. So you can mistake the false Christ for the real one if you're looking for what? Peace on earth and a place to live down here that's not going to be intolerant. See, the devil's two code words are tolerance and coexistence. The Antichrist will build a network of ecumenical spiritual forces that are going to come together to peacefully coexist. And if you're looking for happiness and peace in some type of uh, utopian society on this planet, you will fall prey to the Antichrist, thinking that religion is the answer and peaceful coexistence on planet Earth is going to mean that God has moved to set up some type of nirvana, they call, call it in Hinduism and Buddhism a place of utopian existence where brothers come together and we're all together, homosexuals, lesbians, transgenders, freaks, kooks, and wackos in peaceful coexistence and the Antichrist will rule over all of that. We're going to expose this at this conference and show you different videotapes, different ministry presentations, and different things to explain to you how the devil is taking over. The, the main way he's doing it is by attacking what I call the 21st century nigger. <laughs> the 21st century nigger has to be lynched for the devil to rule. And we're going to address this down at the uh, conference. You've got to be there to hear it. What is a 21st century nigger? We'll leave you just like that. June 1st through June 4th, we'll be down there to explain it to you in detail. Palm Coast, Florida. 28 miles north of Daytona Beach, Florida, the Soldiers of Light Beach Edition con Conference. Be there or be square. 
you better get ready for what's coming. Next on the agenda is to create a cashless society. They've already trained people to accept the mark of the beast by tattooing everybody, so you will be marked with no resistance. They're already conditioning people to be marked by the beast. Tattoos just came into to, uh, some type of a, a, of a revelation and some type of acceptance 15, 20 years ago maximum. Now it's an everyday occurrence and people think it's normal. The devil has turned that which is totally abnormal into normal and he's kicked normalcy in the teeth and anybody that's normal is seen as a problem. And they mark you as intolerant, divisive, homophobic, or strange just because you're normal. This thing is ramping up to a fever pitch. Since you'll depend on the world to sustain yourself down here, the devil just has to change the playing field as far as commerce is concerned and go cashless. And believe me, everybody dependent on the world and the devil's kingdom, they will take the mark in order to eat. They'll take the mark in order to buy gas to get to work. The devil's setting it up real nice. He's a smooth operator. He's making people dependent upon him. He's about to snatch the rug out from under everybody. We're going to deal with this thing June 1st through June 4th, Soldiers of Light Conference Beach Edition. You won't hear this in church because church is the very kingdom of darkness. The church world is the devil's high chair. People operate in the synagogues of Satan, calling the Jesus they worship God, when in fact it's the Antichrist. It's the false Christ in 90 plus percent of the churches. People have no born again experience, no relationship with Christ. They think going to church equals serving God. And they're serving the devil. These are evil synagogues of the devil set up on street corners from coast to coast and worldwide. And folks don't even know it. You rarely meet a born again saved person. That's like a diamond. It's rare. Like a ruby. It's rare. You very seldom see anybody that's saved. That's, you, you'll, you'll, you'll have to, it's a narrow way and few there be that find it. But broad is the way that goes to damnation, Jesus said. And many there be that go in there it. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said that it's very rare to find a saved person. So if you think all these folks are saved, you better think again. They're not. And all these gospels are preached to accommodate lost, damned souls who worship the Antichrist, not in spirit and truth, but where? In the flesh, bathed in fantasies. You see how the devil has a continual projection of fantasies to bathe you in if you're Antichrist stricken because the Antichrist is a fantasy stricken creature that ministers to fantasy stricken people. You got to know that. When you come to truth and reality, you wake up out of this coma. The Bible says, awake thou that sleepeth, and then God will give you light. But as long as you stay in the matrix and you stay brain dead, hooked up to the devil's matrix, you can't see the nose on your own face. And this gospel we preach will not be appealing to you because you're bathed in the spirit of Antichrist, which by nature stands against this kind of a gospel. You can't ingest it and digest it because your very mind is the enemy of God. Remember, the enemy is the carnal mind. The mind attached to your five carnal senses is the enemy. Not, not nobody that's like that can understand what I just said. They can't even see it because they process themselves as being saved while they're damned. And that's the great delusion. Now remember the Bible says God will send a strong delusion that you might be damned. The great delusion is to believe you're saved when you're damned. And you can't even intrude into that mind because I'm already saved. And they go, they're dropping into hell by the millions on a daily basis. Laugh at it, joke about it. When you wake up in the pit, you can't say I didn't tell you about it. Soldiers of Light. Beach Edition, June 1st to June 4th. The registration open now, www.omegaministries.org. Follow the prompts, takes you right through registration, call the hotel, reserve your room, 
pay for one day, you're ready to go. June 1st through June 4th, that's a Thursday through Sunday. We're going to deal with how the devil is setting up his kingdom on earth right now. See, the thing about metaphysical, spiritual things is, is that it doesn't seem like this could really happen here. Satan is a real creature, but you can't see him and engage him with your senses, so it doesn't seem like he's doing anything. What you see is the results of what Satan does by looking at people and circumstances, but you can't see him. So we keep talking to people. I'm through talking to people. You know, this thing has gone far, far enough. It's time to stop talking to people. Talk to God and get some power and save who, whomsoever will come to him, and that's it. But going on and on talking to people, that's over for me. I'm not, I don't have much to say to folks anymore because that's a dead deal. Now it's time to do something about this and stop talking about it. Come down to the conference if you mean business. If you don't, don't come down there. Please stay away. We're not interested in some stupid prophet or prophetess coming down trying to give a word. Go somewhere. Uh, the mega fest, I think, is in June or August. Go down there and prophesy out of them. Last thing, Dunamis Tabernacle. Our job with Dunamis Tabernacle is to raise up a base camp to accommodate those that will do this end time job. We're not interested in some silly, stupid church. We're interested in raising up a base camp for soldiers who are going to engage the enemy to set these end time saints free in order for God to finish off his feast. Remember the feast Jesus spoke about in the Bible? He says, I bid all these folks to come, but they wouldn't come. They had stuff to do. He says, now go into the highways and hedges and compel these ostracized outcasts to come. The folks that you never thought were going to be saved make up the end time harvest. Yeah. Says, forget the folks that I call, the church folk, the religious folk, they don't want to come. Go into the highways and hedges, compel these outcasts to come, and this is what the base camp is for, to raise up folk that can do that job. Engage the devil and bind him, set the captives free, so the Lord's marriage feast will be complete. There are tables that don't have people seated there, and our job is to finish off the seating in the marriage feast. So the base camp is designed for military-minded Christians who are here to harvest an end-time crop so God can wrap this up and culminate the earth by burning it out of existence and replacing it with a new heaven and new earth. That's our job. So that's what Dunamis Tabernacle is all about. It ain't about sitting around in some stupid church listening to sermons all day. It's about being equipped, according to Ephesians chapter 4, to do the work of the ministry yourself. Spectators, commentators, all these folk, they need to go away. We need people who have a military mind who are going to engage and do the job. Notice that everybody that comes in church wants to grab a microphone and start preaching. That's stupid. When your next door neighbor is going to hell, the person on your job is going to hell, everybody around you is going to hell, and you're somewhere trying to get ordained. That old stupid mess, everybody does the work of the ministry. The five-fold ministry gift just prepares you to do the work of the ministry, according to Ephesians chapter 4. It has nothing to do with being ordained or called to preach and all this old that old crazy church paradigm has to go away. Folk, folk got all the stuff about being a preacher or a called or an evangelist, got cards and stuff printed up and all this old dumb junk when folks are standing right next to you lost. Wanna get on Facebook and preach on Facebook Live and everybody around you going to hell, you on Facebook Live. S silly, we got silliness that's come upon people because we've been told what ministry is, we've been told what church should be like, and we fit right into the devil's groove and his outline for church. You gotta break out of that by having your mind loosed from the devil's matrix. As long as you think like the devil, you'll do what the devil says. You gotta have a new way of thinking to do a new thing. That's what it's all about. Dunamis Tabernacle, designed to outfit people to do the job themselves, while at the same time remaining independently interdependent with the body of Christ. You'll be able to ebb and flow with the body of Christ with no resistance 
when your mind is set free. Because you have nothing to prove, you're not trying to look like anything, you're not trying to measure up to anybody, you become a normal person now that can ebb and flow with other people. And there's no junk going on from ego, pride, and flesh. That's what has to be eradicated from the body of Christ for us to become operative as normal people. That's what it's all about. Support Dunamis Tabernacle. Right now, there's $103,000 in the building fund. I mean, it's taken four years to get $103,000 in the building fund for a mission to end the world. Note now what the mission is. Our goal is to end this failed human depravity, and so everybody puts the brakes on. Oh, Barack Obama is paid $400,000 per speech right now to continue the world and talk about it. You see the contrast? As long as you try to continue Satan's world, the money flows because the people don't want the world to end. You mention ending the world, everybody puts the brakes on and sit on live stream stunned, turned to stone, petrified, terrified because they're holding on to the world. Their minds are holding on to the world so when you actually, they actually see somebody that's going to end it and willing to go ahead and die ending it, man, don't, don't save me none of that. Remember, every step Jesus took toward the cross, guess what happened? The crowd thinned out. Every step toward that cross, it got thinner and thinner until he was standing at the cross by himself. Twelve disciples talking big, we'll die with you. Take a step toward that cross. Man, it's perfect. He is purifying his church by the cross. As we get closer to the end of the age, as we actually progress forward to do something about this, slamming into the devil's kingdom means you're going to get what? Retaliation against you and persecution. You're going to see the church crowd thin out. And all you're going to have left is Christ. And those who are what? in covenant with him as his bride. I am crucified with Christ. See, unless you process that through you and you actually see yourself as already dead, you're not going to die for Christ unless you're already dead to the world. See, unless you've already been crucified, you are going to step back from this, and God designed it that way. This is not a happenstance. God designed it to call out those who are not his by progressing the church toward the cross. And every step toward the cross, you'll see more church folk step back. Guess what? A sodomite ain't a saint. And a sodomite ain't going to be crucified. Perfect. God's mind is absolutely logical and perfect. He's got this thing on hyperdrive right now. He's culling the church out right before our very eyes, and most of the people can't even see it. Doing them as tabernacle for those of you around the world that mean business. Guy in London, England sent in $1,300 the other week. London, England, while a guy sits in Atlanta looking at live stream. A guy in London, England can see it. You see how it is? At some point, God has to trigger this thing to raise up these folks launch the Normandy invasion and settle this thing once and for all. This thing needs to be settled once and for all. It's dragging out too long. We need to bring this thing to a conclusion. I say let's just step in it. Let's just go and bring this thing to an ultimatum. Let's issue, issue an ultimatum to the world and get this over with. It's, it's going on and on and everybody talking and talking. Folks are getting sick of talking. I'm talking to folk, those of you who can hear this by live stream, who are saying, look, all right, enough is enough. Let's just go ahead on and, short, and cut this thing short in righteousness and do it. Sooner or later, you're going to see that thing, ride, the tide is going to rise up, and a lot of folk would have sat right in the middle of it and didn't, didn't get prepared for it. And they're going to try to join in with look like, act like, say the same thing as, pretend to be, all that stuff, and not have the inner man refabricated to actually house the Holy Ghost. Unless you got your portion of the Holy Ghost, you can't go on this mission. You got to have your portion. 
my portion of the Holy Ghost? Is he filling me? Am I refabricated to conduct this warfare for God? This is real. Dunamis Tabernacle, Power Tabernacle, support it. We're not here to set up another silly, ignorant, weird, theater-style church. We're here to bring forces together, form up a fighting force, an army, and launch them into a battle to sweep through this place like a sickle, bring in these end-time saints so God can end this spelled human tragedy. That's what it's all about, man. This thing cannot sustain itself. It's gone too far. The minds are becoming reprobate. Support Dunamis Tabernacle at www.omegaministries.org, www.omegaministries.org. Click on support, then donate. Support, then donate. This is not your grandmama's church. This is not for everybody. Don't get mad about me asking for finances for it because I'm not even talking to you. See, anybody gets mad. Now, you all not be asking. I'm not even talking to you. See, anybody with that kind of a mind, you're not even in what I'm talking about. I'm talking about folks that are committed to this themselves and are willing to do something about it. And they'll give everything they've got to end this present evil age. The age is evil. It's ruled by an evil despot. The devil is evil. He's the god of this world. Why would we want to prolong this with an evil Hitler-type cherubim angel ruling it? Let's end it. It's depravity, it's filth, it's degraded, it's humiliating. Let's get out of here. I'm not talking to you religious folk that all you do is heretic hunt. I'm talking to folks that mean business and are ready and willing and able to do something about this. We're not going to sit around as another T.D. Jakes or Creflo Dollar as, as a king and lord over God's inheritance. It's here to, we're here to equip you to go do what you need to do. And there is no promise of you coming back. Jesus said go. He didn't say nothing about coming back. See, that's why it's going to, it calls out the fake folks. Go. And all these, John is dead. Peter is dead. James is dead. Paul is dead. Still go. Keep going. What about, what about attrition? We're losing folks. Keep going. He don't say nothing about coming back. This is an impossible mission for us. We're bringing in a harvest. If we lose folk along the trail, keep loading these bushels. <laughs> We're harvesting a field. Keep the crop going into the bushels. If you leave, lose people along the way, so be it. You got to give up everything to walk with Christ. You lose your life to find your life. Let a man first do what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and go. If you don't have that in you, um, Jake's, Dollar, Copeland, Joyce Myers, uh, Charles Stanley, John MacArthur, and on and on and on it goes. You can go, all, uh, go over there and just play church. Because none of this stuff is designed to end this. Rick Warren and your purpose-driven life and all that junk. Follow that. I'm talking to an elect, select, chosen people to do an end-time job. It's not for everybody. I don't even address it to everybody, so don't misunderstand and misinterpret me. This thing is about a select, elect group that's going to do an impossible mission at the end of the age www.omegaministry.org, click on support, then donate. Dunamis Tabernacle raised up one time to do a job, and then they can have it. We'll leave the keys with them. Don't worry about the building. When we're finished harvesting, here's the keys to the building, the vehicles, and anything else you want over here, because we're getting out of here. <laughs> Nobody trying to, if you're trying to build some kind of sustained empire, you got the wrong thing. You know, you might want, want to talk to uh, Taraji P. Henson or somebody about empire. We're talking about trying to get out of here after doing the job. This is the real deal. This ain't your grandmama's church. This is the church of Jesus Christ. Dunamis Tabernacle, $103,000 in the building fund, pushing toward a million dollars to purchase this property, renovate it, and launch. Numbers are inconsequential. 
We need the army, whatever, it, whatever it numbers out it, that's fine. Launch to confront, seek and destroy the devil and bring in God's people. He says, compel them to come. We need compelling power now to bring these folk in from this, this field. And that's Holy Ghost power that compels. That's what we got to have. So do it, man. It's time to move into another place with this. It's going to wrap up the announcements. We're going to take up a quick offering again. You can go to www.omegaministers.org, click on support and donate to give this morning by way of live stream. Click over there now. You can use your debit card, credit card, give an offering. And we'll get right into the message after this as we talk about today, the law of reciprocity. There's a law that governs God, God's kingdom. It's called recipro reciprocity. What is that? We'll detail it today in this message. Let's take up this offering and we'll get right back into the word in just one minute. All right, we'll get to the word for today. Get into this word for today as we deal with the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity. Before we get going, we got a quick video we're going to look at. I think it's about 15 minutes long. Just an update by Jacob Prash from something recently he talked about. We always try to expose you to different preachers and teachers and ministers because you need the five-fold ministry gifts across the board to work on your mind. The five-fold ministry gifts are like the fingers on a hand that's molding your mind. You know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, you need all five of those fingers working on your mind. You never want to become lopsided when you just deal with teachers or just pastors or just evangelists or just prophets or just apostles. You need that hand massaging and molding that mind into a normal state of thinking. You know, we, we were warped in our minds. The Bible says we were alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that was in us. Then it talks about be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that same passage in, in uh, Ephesians. So you see now, the warping of the mind is what made us alienated from God. So God has to mold and shape the mind back into a place that can be a conduit to receive him. So that's why we try to expose you to the David Paulsons and the Jacob Prashes and the Derek Princes and the uh, B.H. Clendenin, who was an evangelist, and you know, you gotta have that massaging done to you. You know, every once in a while you might see an apostle. Notice how everybody tries to be an apostle. You very rarely see an apostle. And everybody got a card saying, I'm an apostle. <laughs> the likelihood of them, them being an apostle, an apostle is slim to none, because you very rarely see an apostle. And when you see one, you'll know it because the gifts of an apostle will accompany him or her. Well, not, not a herd. Apostles are basically male. So to be like, you'll recognize them by the gifts that follow them. But now you got women that are claiming to be apostles. And they do that, do that just so nobody will tell them what to do. Everybody becomes an apostle, so nobody can tell them what to do. That's why they do it. It's just like they become a bishop. So they won't be told what to do by anybody. So it's just the old schematic of the devil We're trying to work out a way not to be accountable to anybody because my title is above everybody. And I looked at the fivefold ministry gifts in Ephesians chapter 4, and it seemed like apostle was on the top of the heap. So therefore, I'll make myself that, so you'll have to answer to me. This is the old tricks of the trade. You know, you just got to ignore that junk and get away from it. So let's get into this uh, video real fast today, and then we get into the word as we talk about the law of reciprocity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. Thank you for the word of God. Take these words today, God, and quicken them to the hearts of the hearers. Bring forth fruit, not even 30, not even 60, but 100-fold. We need a full return on words sown now, God. We don't need a 30 and a 60. We need a 100-fold return because we don't have the luxury of time. We're out of time. We got to have something to happen. God, let this word be effective. Let it change us as we ingest it every day of the week, every hour of every day. Let the day end with a change made in us. Not thinking the same. My emotions are not the same. I don't feel the same. I don't want the same things. The things of this world have grown strangely dim. I'm basically through with it all. God, let that word move us and translate us into another way of thinking. 
that the kingdom of God takes hold on our minds, and we'll give you the praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, this is Jacob, uh, Jacob Prash here. I don't know, tell us the title of this, you know? Hmm? Oh, okay. He's talking about Hillsong a little bit, Hillsong Ministries. Yeah, but he talks about some other things along with Hillsong, so just take a listen to what he's saying. Date, I'm Doc Burkhart. As if Hillsong's recent controversy regarding the Times Square naked cowboy wasn't creating enough worries for the megachurch, a further look at the video reveals even more startling content. This video shows a clip from Hillsong's recent color conference, a special event for women. This huge production number, which features the naked cowboy, ninja turtles, dancers, and other images from the Big Apple, finishes up with a crooner introducing Lady Liberty. Unfortunately, this Lady Liberty has a beard. What message is Hillsong trying to convey? If the purpose is to portray Jesus Christ as Lady Liberty, many Christians would find this extremely offensive because Lady Liberty herself, a gift from France, is actually the image of a goddess. And why have a man portrayed Lady Liberty at all? What purpose did it serve other than to convey a transsexual message of inclusion for the megachurch? The viewer is encouraged to watch the video and judge whether this portrayal of Jesus as Lady Liberty is glorifying to God or the very incarnation of apostate blasphemy. Uh, this is simply entertainment for the millennials. It is again something we've referred to. The prophecy of Charles Spurgeon over a hundred years ago. A time would come when instead of having shepherds in the pulpit feeding the sheep, we would have clowns entertaining the goats. Well, Brian Houston is a clown. Bobby Houston is a clown. Carl Lentz is a clown. Clowns entertaining the goats. That's what it is. Spurgeon's prophecy. Has come true. It has been fulfilled. He was absolutely correct in what he predicted. And it is happening. It's unbelievable. What would the world think? What would unsaved people think looking at this ridiculous, absurd spectacle? Now again, when you add this to the Australian Broadcasting Company or Corporation documentary exposés on the financial scandals that he'll saw. The Sydney church that's become a global phenomenon. <laughs> From cafe culture to concerts. People ask me, can you ever imagine all that was ahead of you? Born in Castle Hill, now Hillsong is about to become bigger than ever. Find out where their churches are setting up next, in Sydney and around the world. Nine News tonight. And to the sex scandals with Frank Houston, with Pat Masidi and so forth, and Bobby Houston. Christian women love sex. Now it's the naked cowboy. The whole thing is a shame and a disgrace. But co equally shameful and disgraceful are people like Greg Laurie compromising with it, making excuses for it. There is no excuse for it, Greg Laurie, and there's no excuse for your making an excuse. You've done the same thing with Rick Warren, who says we have to unite with people who worship other gods, other gods that Paul and Moses both call demons, Shadim and Damanoi. We have to unite with Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims to bring in global peace. That is the Antichrist agenda, and you wheel him out in Anaheim Stadium. From the Houstons, I expect this. The way you see God decides what you believe God does, what you believe God loves, and what you believe God blesses, where his favor will be. So I couldn't encourage any leader who wants to live purposefully and who wants to build a church that reflects the heart of God. I couldn't encourage you more 
to make sure that your view of the master is through a new covenant, New Testament lens, that we look at the Old Testament, which is so full of beauty and power and example and wonder and is so much of the whole tenor of God's message, but we need to look at it through the lens of the resurrection and the cross and back into it from where we stand now and not from where they stood then, because otherwise it's going to affect your ability to be purposeful and building and leading and bringing release and bringing freedom and seeing those things God puts in your heart come to pass. How do you view God in a desert? There's two types of birds. There's vultures and there's hummingbirds. One lives off dead carcasses, rotting meat. The other lives off the beautiful sweet nectar in a particular flower on a particular desert plant. In the same desert, they both find what they're looking for. Do you know, take it all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah, to a Muslim, to us, our Father, God. And of course, through history, those views have changed greatly. Carl Lenz, I expect it. Be patient with each person. What? I didn't even know that was in there. That's annoying. Everybody? I'm going to check some commentary to make sure that doesn't mean everybody. Be attentive to individual needs. That's interesting. Isn't that cool? That's why some churches want us to give blanket answers on huge issues. Well, my Bible says, be attentive to individual needs. That's why we're not going to make polarizing political statements about certain things in our Christian community right now. No matter who says what, we won't be pressured into giving blanket statements to individual needs. Never. <laughs> Never. Um, speaking of diversity, you know, New York City, one thing that is polarizing to some communities, especially within religion, is homosexuality and yeah. the debate around it. I mean, how do you balance those two things? I mean, are people of all sexual orientations welcome? And, and how do you see that? Absolutely. I think what I was referring to there was, you know, some people would be like, you need to make that, you, you need to answer our questions about the homosexuality issue. And I always say, I do, you just don't like my answers. And here's exactly what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. The, some media wants us to use our pulpit mm -hmm. to uh, have a soapbox for social issues. I don't believe that's our job. I don't believe Jesus did that. You go look at what Jesus did. He was always talking about the heart of an individual and the soul of a person, not these symptomatic societal problems. And people hate that because a lot of churches are about what they're against. We're about what we're for. And when it comes to people's sexuality, I don't want to use a public forum to yeah. talk about private things because how in the world can you have a dialogue? How in the world can I hear your story? How in the world can someone have a question? So if I, if I stand up in a pulpit and I just start railing at something or make a statement in, in a newspaper about something, I, I believe it's insensitive to the journey that people are walking yeah. on and our church is going to protect people no matter where you're from, no matter what you carry, no matter what kind of um, orientation you feel like is your um, you know, lane of life to run in, um, you know, I want to have a conversation about it. We have a stance on love yeah, and we have conversations about everything else. Well, I, lo I mean, I love that and that makes sense to me because when you say, you know, you have a stance on love and you're talking about hearts and souls, I often see, you know, people want to focus on homosexuality and, and the gay marriage issue and whether yeah. they should be allowed to get married. And a lot of homosexual couples are looking around saying, I just love this person with all my heart and soul, yeah. so I'm looking for some support. Yeah. Do you feel like it's you, you're not in a position to give them support on that issue or do you feel like it's just it, not your no, lane it's not, I don't it's not my job to be people's judge and jury yeah. if I sat down with a homosexual couple and they asked me what I thought about their relationship I would tell them mm -hmm. and it would be at their table and it would be our business but their situation is different than the next situation and often people get these two words mixed up mm -hmm. acceptance and approval like, I don't necessarily, if someone comes in my church, I don't have to approve of every single thing in their life because that's not my job. I'm not God. Yeah. But my job is to accept you as I have been accepted with everything in my life. God accepted me. So acceptance and approval, we draw a really cool line in there because it's like, look, I'm not going to tell you. There's a lot of people who will come into our church, mm -hmm. leave and go, no thanks. I don't want to change my, I don't want to live, I don't want to believe that. And I say, good for you, that's your job. You have to answer to God for your life, not me. Yeah. So why is this on me? So right. people are always like, what do you think about homosexuality? I'm like, I love my wife, I'm married. You're asking the wrong guy. Um, but that's just to be funny. But I, I do believe it's such a, a sensitive issue. I have gay friends, yeah. I have uh, people that I love that are right in the thick of that kind of debate. Right. 
And I just refuse to uh, ostracize people any longer. I hate it. I think that there's been so much hate yeah. and so much bigotry and so much insensitivity that um, I'm done with that. And so the people who criticize us for it, yeah. I, li I like making those people mad because yeah. no, they, they are who they are. And I think if we focus on love, it'll all fix itself out. If, if all people just focus on love, I, I, at least that's my personal belief. Um, I just do want to you know before you go, yeah. before you, if Jesus said to do two things. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And then he said, number two, love your neighbor. From Rick Warren, I unfortunately expected. But from great glory, I would have expected something better. But there is nothing better. Well, let's understand it even further. Collins, and I state this publicly, and I state this to him, is a hypocrite, a false teacher, and a liar. He's a hypocrite, a false teacher, and a liar. Taking a passage from Thessalonians out of context that we deal with people on an individual basis, he takes that to mean we do not deal with publicly moral issues that are controversial or that can be politically interpreted. He said that Jesus doesn't do that. It's not scriptural. He says he's not going to talk about same-sex marriage or homosexuality because it's a personal issue. He's not going to deal in a public forum like church with a personal issue. He's a liar and a deceiver. Romans 1 is not in his New Testament. Widespread homosexuality and bisexuality were endemic in the Greco-Roman world in the first century. We had people being saved out of that background coming into the body of Christ with serious questions concerning it. Writing under the direct influence and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul addresses those issues in Romans 1 and does so publicly. Carl Lynch, you're a liar and a deceiver. You and your naked cowboy. You are responsible for what happened. It was your church, your conference, colorful. I'll debate you anytime, anywhere on these issues, Carl Lentz, because I know what you are. You're somebody who Jesus warned would come in the last days to deceive the elect. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. I am so sick of these old spiritual girly men hanging around with nothing to say, place packed to the rafters with people deceived by these wimps, all because they don't have the guts to stay, say what's true. And that old passive is sounding junk of tolerance, indifference, and inclusion is it just, it's just ruining and destroying a generation of people. Never challenged with truth. This wimp doesn't stand for anything, not even saved. An actual messenger from Satan and the folks sitting up packing churches out. And you know what they get into? The worship songs. See, Hillsong has done a brilliant thing. The worship songs can minister to me and you. But then they shifted over to satanic gibberish coming from the mouth of a false prophet. It's a slick operation. We're living in this. I'm, I'm showing you these messages every week to show you what we're really living in because you're going to live in a cocoon and not realize how bad it is. This thing is on the brink of hell breaking out. You know what's going to happen? Everybody that listens to that guy like Carl Lentz is going to hate me and you. They're raising up the Antichrist spirit to hate the real saints. That's the mission they're on. I'm glad they hate me, those that are like this. It's been enough hatred, enough bitterness, and a, enough judgment. Man, that's the Bible. He came to convict the world of what? Sin, righteousness, judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I'm, I'm going to tell you the thing that I cannot understand, really. This is, a, this is still a mystery to me. 
you come in here and you've been pushed to the cliff, the edge of the cliff by homosexuals. You turn to some guys and say, hey man, let's stand against these homosexuals. You find yourself standing there by yourself. You don't have some guys with the balls to stand against some homosexuals? You better off dying, letting them push you over the cliff, standing against them, than to allow them to amalgamate into the culture with you, your wife, and your kids, justifying themselves and making themselves normal. This place should be packed from the front to the back with guys who are saying, man, we're not going out like this. Crickets. From guys. You know where it came from? Some woman performing oral sex on them turned them into a girl. Now they got no balls to stand. They engaged in sodomy themselves. And now they identify with the weak, emaciated, effeminate sodomites and when you stand against that spirit, since the spirit is embedded in them, they can't stand against it. That's right. That's right. It's a, and you try to figure out what's going on. I mean, we've been pushed around by homosexuals. Don Lemon, Anderson Cooper, Shepard Smith, boldly proclaiming what they believe on Fox News and CNN every day, and you over there chirping like a little, little bird, Scared of them. I want to go to the gym and lift some weights. That barbell need to fall on your neck when you're lifting it. It's your girly butt. Jesus Christ was a man sent from God. John the Baptist was a man sent from God. Pontius Pilate looking at Jesus said, behold the man. Heterosexual guys are MIA. And now the women have been conditioned to accommodate, associate with, complement, and supplement homosexual guys. Knowing we can keep them weak as long as we perform oral sex on them. And the guy sitting there looking like a little girl dragging around, tender, with his little plaits draped down his back, with his pants pulled down to his booty hole, looking crazy. No guts, man. You're a gal. And then when God calls up men to war, well, I don't believe we should judge anybody, and I, I agree with that. The little old girly guy trying to agree with somebody. Yeah, as long as we love, as long as we love. Man, this is, a, this is worse than a shame. This is a crying shame. Thinking they're a player, you're just a gal with that butch dyke girl performing oral sex on you, that's just a lesbian performing oral sex on you, so she can take your authority, turn you into a woman, and now you're walking around with your pants pulled down to your butt crack, talking about you a hip-hop boy, a hip-hop dog, I'm a real man, I'm an a, a OG, an old gangster. I'm a gangster. You a gal, you ain't a gangster. Because you can't even take somebody talking to you like a man. You can't even take it. So you wall on down to the mega fest with Tyler Perry, T.D. Jakes, and all those effeminate guys talking about your emotions. And Jake stands in that pulpit and he sodomizes you. And you leave more gal than you were before, than before you came. You come, and the Bible says it this way, he makes you twofold, the child of hell. The mystery of the gospel is the fact that Jesus came and sacrificed himself up to the sodomites. Those guys were effeminate, all of them. And the Bible says they killed him because of envy. They envied a man because they couldn't be one. That's the mystery of, of iniquity. The Bible talks about a mystery of iniquity. Jesus said, this is the power of darkness. I'm exposing you to you what the power of darkness is. Jesus sacrificed himself up to the sodomites in order to rid the world of the sodomites. He took on the nature of the king of the sodomites, the Adam, Adamic nature. And then he sacrificed himself up to them 
to set us free from the scourge of the Sodomites. And all you have in you when you can't come to the gospel, with everything in you, you got the remnants of that nature in you. And your sexual appetites and what you did in the world confirms the fact that I am right. You, it's, it, you can't debate it. You don't see them pack it in here because they're full of the sodomite spirit. They're trying to find a way to get me to downgrade this. Accommodate me, man. You're so vicious. One guy called it heavy shepherding. He's mean. He's angry. I'm none of that. I'm just talking to you like a regular guy. Real women will align themselves with real men. But what's happening? As long as you're driven by lust, you're a gal. You're tiny Tim. You're tenderoni. You're weak need. You'll buckle because a, a big booty walked by you. So now the girl's going down to Brazil and getting nitroglycerin and motor oil and, and all kinds of just cement and everything, putting the butt looking like a Mack truck. Because they know a sodomite is what? A worshiper of the butt. So they're building butts. They got Lego sets to build butts now. All that, but you're going to knock over something with all that. Get, you're going to knock over the vases and all the stuff and out. Look, get that china out of the way. Up there go, bam, bam, bam. Look. All that cement out of your butt. A sodomite is a worshiper of the behind. What's wrong with all these girls? Why they're so crazy? These guys been sodomizing them. And it flipped them out. Everybody ain't got big eyes. They were just sodomizing it. The eyes stuck like that. This a mess. And I don't go, I'm not going around anything because I ain't backing off no sodomites. I ain't running from no sodomites. I stand right here, just butcher me, man. You got a shotgun, a machine gun, whatever, you just kill me, man. Before I turn tail and run from a sodomite, I, I'm better off dead. If God don't have any more power than that, I'd rather be dead than to fool around down here pretending to serve God. He that weak. So we might as well just trade in all this and burn your Bible and leave this alone. If God is having the church turn tail and run from sodomites, when in the Old Testament he totally engaged sodomites, and overcame every one of them, destroyed everything in sight. He said, burn everything in the camp. He said, the sin of sodomy it was, make, it was what makes the land vomit you out. Those wimps at Hillsong, Rick Warren, the guy does all this. It's two kinds of birds in the desert a vulture and a hummingbird. One lives off of the dead carcass, the other lives off of the sweet nectar of the flowers. So you can see the good. He's saying like, you should be the person that just sees the good. And then he slipped in. See, Muslims have the same God as we do. You, see that joker shifted over on you. If you didn't pick it up, see he would've he just, he would've just weaved a web over you and a, put a spell on you. He told you Allah and the Lord Jesus Christ are the same person. And then told you all to just see the good. Man, that joker getting ready to send everybody in that place to hell if they believe that. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Jesus Christ alone. They tried to incorporate Elijah and Moses with him. Elijah and Moses disappeared. God the Father says, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. And that's it. There is no plan B. 
Plan A is Jesus Christ alone is your salvation. Salvation is through Jesus Christ alone. That's plan A. Plan B is to remember plan A. <laughs> That's it. Folks are making a fool out of themselves at the most inopportune time, and church folks have become pacifist. They sit and just don't say a thing and let anybody get away with saying anything, not me. That's why I like Jacob Prash. Jacob Prash was there, you are a deceiver, you're a liar, and a fraud. That's, I mean, I, can, I take that all day long. If I'm doing something wrong, I want a guy to talk to me just like that. And I got to swallow it and change. A guy? You got to tiptoe through the tulips with a man? Sensitive, emotional, angry, hurt, full of debate all the time, and women are trying to accommodate them. See, I'm gonna tell you a problem with a lot of you women while you're going through emotional trauma. You married a gal, a girly man, just trying to promote himself as a man of God, and now you're traumatized because this guy is pressurizing you to measure up to what he's trying to make you to make him look good. When you got your own emotional problems yourself, you got your own needs yourself that God hasn't dealt with, and now you're put into this, this box of trying to make him look like a man of God. Because he, he's supposed to be ministering to you to get you right. Yeah, he's trying to preach or get on Facebook live, and his, and his life is ragged as a can of sauerkraut. And so all these young girls running around trying to be divas for God, following the designs and paradigms of all these diva preachers' wives running around trying to look like Beyonce in the pulpit. And inside, they're falling apart. They're rejected, hurt, got all kinds of problems, been abandoned by their fathers, torn apart inside, coming out of whoredoms, your inside still damaged from it, and now you've got to put up this image of yourself, a caricature, to make folks believe you're okay. We talked about it last, last week. You put a caricature out front of a religious person, a vignette of yourself that's not even real, trying to live up to the church folk standards. Our job is to deconstruct the caricature so you can be you again. But the devil is sending boobs like this guy to tell you, I don't get into that publicly. Well, what are you preaching? What are you preaching publicly? But see, this thing is coming in like a flood now. Hillsong has got worldwide recognition. They're putting churches on every continent right now. That's why you get Jake's and, 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 and the mega fest and he motions and woman thou art loose. These jokers coming in like a flood, the Bible says. The only hope now is that God's word is true and he raises up a standard against that flood. It's got to be somebody going to stand up against the flood. It's a torrent coming in of this trash that's bathing people's minds in an antichrist spirit. So if you tell the truth, the antichrist spirit stands up in the religious people and hates you. You go into a church, you can feel the essence of the antichrist spirit in the church. You know Instinctly, instinctly, you cannot say anything in that church concerning Jesus Christ and his righteousness. It's bathed in the church. It's all in the pews. We were in a Baptist church Tuesday for a funeral. You knew instinctively this is the bastion of the Antichrist. It felt evil. The people looked evil. This thing here is dirty. That's why you as an individual better be responsible for you. Examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. Keep looking through you over and over again to see where are there any vestiges of that old life to be expunged from my soul. That's what it's all about. That's why we're starting a fast tomorrow for 11 days, May 15th through the 25th, dedicated to self-examination, not trying to destroy stuff over there and over yonder and out there in la-la land. If the enemy exists, 
The enemy is in me. Stop trying to heretic hunt. You got heretics trying to be heretic hunters. The devil will keep you what? Externally focused. Because the Bible says there's nothing from the outside of a man can, get, that can defile a man. Nothing on the outside can make you dirty. If God is not moving in full power, the enemy is within. So you got to fast. You got to deny flesh. You got to cut off the TV and the movies and the junk and get along with God in your Bible to be again to examine yourself microscopically, layer by layer, to find out why am I acting like this? What is this triggering in me that makes me respond a certain way? Why is my mind thinking these thoughts? Why do I feel this way? What is this, this plague in me that I can't shake? See, if you've got something plaguing you that you can't shake, you've got to put the brakes on and begin to look for that thing and hunt it down like a dog and exterminate it. Because, see, the gospel is real. What God can do is real. The flow of the Holy Ghost is real. If these things are not experiential, I got to begin to examine myself to find out where this thing is being damned up. This real, man. Look at the book of Acts. You think the book of Acts just took place helter skelter? They met the required qualifications for the book of Acts to happen. And God knows we need the book of Acts to break out again. Because these folks can't be saved through verbiage. You can't talk somebody into salvation. Their minds are too contaminated. They're too reprobate. Their minds are jacked up. They call evil good and good evil. The devil has people's minds so crazy now, they'll go to the devil for help and think they're coming to God. This guy sits, in here with a, sits up here with a skull cap on. See, the very presentation of, of their persona shows you they're just kooks. They're a cool cat, hip cat, dude off the block, trying to appeal to the hustlers and the gangsters and the hip hop crowd and the 21st century millennials. You know, they call the millennials people that can't take any pressure. They don't want anything to be out of the way. You know, it's, everything's got to be nice. You know, when Trump got elected, they had to get dogs on the campuses in college for, to keep the kids company because they were so hurt from the election, they tried to get pets for them to stroke little cats and dolls to make them feel better. That's the kind of junk they're doing for folks nowadays. We're living in an insane asylum. The devil has dumbed folks down, made them emotional cripples so they can't take anything, and he's driving a, a tank down the street and everybody's just trying to get the devil to love them. Well, he's got a tank turret aimed at your, turn, aim, aimed at your head you're telling, you're standing with Lily's talking about love me. This joke is ready to kill everything in sight. He comes for three reasons. To steal, to kill, and destroy. He steals everything from you in life. He kills you to end your life. And then he destroys you in hell. See, killing and destroying can't be the same thing because Jesus broke them up into killing and destroying. So he steals from you in life kills you to end your life, destroys you eternally in hell. That's the only reason he comes, to steal from you everything you got now. After you've been drained dry, he kills you like he did Michael Jackson, then he destroys you in hell. Steal, kill, destroy. So why are you trying to accommodate him? You should be vigorously and viciously anti-devil and anti-Christ. Die with your boots on, fighting him every inch of the way. But don't try to accommodate him. Don't try to tolerate him. Don't try to be inclusive. And don't try to coexist with anybody. We're not here to coexist with anybody. We're here to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and let the chips fall where they may. I'm sick of wimps like this. I'm sick of the, the, the Rick Warrens and all these Dr. Phil and all these wimps talking all day. You all, as a man, I appeal to men. What is wrong with you? What has happened to you? What cuts your guts out of you? Man, you need to go back and ask God to refabricate you as a man and bring you back alive again in Christ 
to do a Holy Ghost work for God at the end of time. We're talking about the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity. What is reciprocity? It's the practice of exchanging things with others for mutual benefit. So reciprocity is, is an exchange of things between two entities that will mutually benefit the other party. In other words, if I give you $5 for that watch, you want the $5, I want the watch. So it's mutually beneficial to both of us. I got what I wanted, you got what you wanted. So reciprocity is an even, fair exchange between two parties. And God's kingdom is governed by reciprocity. To be reciprocal, it means that it's given, felt, or done in return. So reciprocal means something done or given in return. So let's take a look at this law of reciprocity in the, reciprocity in the Bible. Look at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7. Galatians 6, 7, the law of reciprocity. He says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. Sickness, disease, infirmity, insanity, your flesh rotting off of the bone, AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, you sow to your flesh, then from the place you sown, the flesh, you get corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit, as capital S says, the Holy Spirit, shall of the Holy Spirit reap life everlasting, eternal life. So what I'm sowing into the bastions of the Holy Ghost I'm getting back from the Holy Ghost a reciprocal return, which is eternal life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In the due season, when the crop is prepared to come in, we will reap if we faint not. See, the due season is the season when the crop has done what? Come to maturity. That's the due season. See, the due season for oranges come at a particular time of the year down in Florida. I think it's what? What they bring in oranges from the field? December? November, December. So that's the due season. So don't, don't go picking, looking for oranges in June. It's not the due season yet. You will reap in due season if you faint not. So don't grow weary in what? Well doing. In God's due time, you will reap from the Spirit eternal life if you sow to the spirit. So you got to keep pushing. You can't afford to look around and be distracted. You got a due season coming your way. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Do good to all men, especially those that belong to the household of faith. So keep sowing into the people of God, those that believe in God, those that are of the household of faith. Do good to them, you'll reap from that same environment eternal life. God will return to you what you put out. You're seeing the spiritual life of people enhanced. You're seeing the Holy Ghost build up a reservoir in people because you're feeding the spirit in them. And you'll get back benefits from that environment because you sold into that environment. You got to stay like that. You got to stay plugged in to that realm and not be distracted by anything outside of that realm. You can't control what people will or won't do, but you can control what you will or won't do as far as you can take it. So you see now, you'll reap in due season if you faint not and to always do good to those that belong to the household of faith. Look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Take a look at verse 37. He says, judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For of the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. 
And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou, ca how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when you yourself behold not the beam that is in your own eye. You hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. He says, look, while you're trying to help all these folks and talk about all this junk, you got a plank in your own eyes trying to get a speck of wood out of somebody else's eye. Get your own eyesight together first before you try to take something out of somebody else. That's the problem with people. They go out there trying to be these Star Wars evangelists with a life that looks like sewer water. Get yourself right before you go out there trying to deal with people. If not, you'll be contaminated like this guy trying to preach to 20,000 people blind as a bat. He's got a beam in his own eye trying to tell somebody else how to live. That's what will happen when you have not gone through the process to eliminate the worldly, fleshly mess that all of us come to God with embedded inside of us. We have this stuff embedded in us. It has to be a sponge for us to see clearly how to deliver other people. He says, for a good tree brings not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather their grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. See, whatever's down in you, your mouth is going to say it. You might be able to hold it back and try to hide it for a season, but sooner or later, you will say what's down in you. Just keep hanging around and keep living. Folks are going to tell you what they really are. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why are people talking about Jesus and won't obey him? Won't do one thing the Lord says calling them Lord. That's why it says many will come to me and say, Lord, have I not? He says, I don't know you because you wouldn't obey me. So it's based on obedience. You call me Lord but won't obey me. Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that hears and does not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against, against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. That's what it is. It's the foundation that you're building your life on. He says, if you build this thing on hearing or listening to the gospel and not doing it, you're not building on a, on a firm foundation. You got to do what you're told. You got to do what you heard. It's not enough just to listen to messages continuously. What practical application is taking place in your life? If he says, give and it shall be given, do you give so it, sh so it shall be given? Are you really doing what he's saying to do? That's when it becomes a practical thing that begins to apply to you so you can reap the benefits from it. Outside of that, you're just a non-participatory spectator going through the motions, and it has no bearing on you. You know a lot of junk, but it's not beneficial to you. I just know stuff, but I never practically apply what I know. What a waste of time. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, we're talking about the law of reciprocity. John chapter 8, take a look at verse 31. John 8, 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, what's if? A conditional statement, correct? 
If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it's a lot of conditional statements like that in the Bible. If you continue in my word, then you really are my disciple. And, in, and under those conditions, you'll know the truth, and the truth shall set you free or make you free. That's the law of reciprocity. I continued in your word. I didn't depart from you, Jesus. I'm getting to know truth that will make me free. But you got to continue on to know the Lord. You got to continue in his word. You just can't get a few promised scriptures and stand on them. This is a life lived out. A disciple indeed to know the truth that will make you free. Now you got to understand the process. Hey, if he's telling us that we need to be made free, we must have been slaves. You don't see any chains or fetters or, or, or choke holes on folk anywhere, man, no collars on them. What in the world are we being made free from? We were enslaved by sins, the slaves of sin. When you are driven to sin by things in you, inputs and, and, and all these idiosyncrasies and appetites that are driving you and compelling you to sin, you, the, you are the slave of sin. That's a tragic way to live, where you can't even control your own state of being, your own emotions, your own feelings. You're driven and compelled to do things by forces outside of you. You're a slave to this stuff. He says, continue in my word, though. You'll be a disciple. You'll come up under the disciplines of the word, indeed, and you'll know truth that will make you free. Now, if truth is the freedom maker, I must be bound by fantasies and lies. That's what's doing it. Fantasies and lies about life, circumstances, and myself have bound me. You can have an, a, a, a bad self-evaluation of yourself that will bind you. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'll never amount to anything. I'm rejected. I, I go to the back of the bus by nature. That will bind you and limit you. Why should you be like that? Why should you always settle for a second-class ticket when a first-class seat is available? Because of how you see yourself. The devil can give you a bad self-image through words, circumstances, and inputs in your life that you never rise up above what the devil put on you. But guess what? The word of God is given to do what? Rewrite the program. Rewrite your mind. Re rewrite your self-image so you can get above all of this stuff. But you got to abide in the word. You got to live in it. You got to ingest it. You got to eat it daily. You got to make this thing the only thing in life that matters in order to change everything in every facet of your life. If you don't just live in the word, circumstances, surroundings, and this world at large will dictate to you who you are. And you'll settle for it. People are selling for, the, for nothingness now. They just go to the lowest state of existence and accept that it's the status quo for everybody. But you'll always do what? You'll always amalgamate into a group of people like you. Low life, low thinking, low down, drags, going nowhere on the lowest rung of the ladder, expecting nothing out of life more than the sewer water they drink every day. But God is saying, look, come up higher. Think higher. Get your mind in my word. Let me re rewrite that program to make you more. The law of reciprocity. When you put time in the word of God, if you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap from that same arena a change in yourself. You're going to begin to see yourself and life through another lens. And you're going to begin to separate from people who are not like you. It's going to happen all by itself. You can't make anybody be different and think differently, but you can think differently about yourself, circumstances, and life in general. That's what God is saying. He came to give life and give it more abundantly. But you got to change what? The way you think. It's all in your mind. And the devil launches all of his weapons toward your mind. 
Can't you see the war is taking place in your mind? John 15. John chapter 15, look at verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So you see now, if then statements, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you shall ask what you will and it shall be, it shall be done unto you. My, his word has got to live in you. It's got to take residence in you. It's got to live in you. It's got to abide in you and you can ask what you will. Then, see, he's looking for disciples. People who just don't listen, they hear and they do. Not a hearer, but a doer of the word is blessed in his or her deed. You've got to move over into another realm whereby the word is not something that is external to you. It's got to be engrafted into you. It's got to become the very essence of your life. Because you can see all these liars are out here. These folks have been, have been sent by Satan with an open Bible to deceive people who are not doers. They are just listeners and hearers. They don't do anything. They come to hear speeches and oratory week after week. And guess what the devil will do? The devil will send a word from the Bible not designed to change you, but what is it going to do? It's going to accommodate you. See, the way he's binding you is he's sending you a word that you don't have to do anything to change. God loves you. God, th this boob says it's a difference between acceptance and approval. See, that's a, that's a man, that's an old trick. Of, that's sleight of hand right there. I don't have to approve of you to accept you. Well, the Bible says, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? But if thou doest not well, Sin is couching at your door. Your sin has separated between you and your God. We're accepted in the beloved. This nutcase is believing that God will accept you although he doesn't approve of what you're doing. That's a lie birthed in hell. But he's talking docile, quiet, everybody. That, now that's so... That's so comforting, what he said. God does not have to approve of everything I do, but he accepts me just like I am. So as a homosexual or lesbian, I come right into the church, and God, although he might not approve of everything I do, nobody here is perfect. That's how homosexuals begin to talk. Let he that was out sin cast the first stone. You mean to tell me you're perfect, Dan? See, that's how they downgrade the gospel. They bring it down to the lowest level of human depravity and say none of us is perfect. But Jesus is the standard, not Dan. Not you, not me. Jesus is perfect. So you're accepted where? In him. And if you get in him, he will then do what? Transform you into his image so that God will accept you. You, not, you can come like you are, but you can't stay like you are. You got to change. Whomsoever will, let them come and drink of the waters that are freely given. But the waters that are freely given are cleansing waters to wash your dirty butt off. That's the truth. Somebody tell you God will accept you but not approve of you? That's the devil with a skull cap on. These guys are young novices. They don't even know anything about God. But what's happening? Young people are identifying with other young people who don't know God because it doesn't challenge them to change. That's why you got gangster rap and gangster gospel and hip hop gospel and all this junk. They don't want to be challenged to change so they get somebody out of their peer group and, and, and ordain them and nominate them as the leader because he's just like me. And they won't preach the gospel, they'll tell you you're just fine, 
just like you are. Nobody has to change, because I'm not changing, you're not changing, and we're going to modify the gospel to make God into us, because we don't want to be transformed to be like him. This thing is everywhere. I'm telling you now, this is the scourge that covers the earth right now. It's a rare person that can hear what I'm saying right now. Even religious people want to talk in tongues and go babbling off in tongues and prophesying. Most of them are rebels. They religiously hide behind a bunch of junk they're doing not to deal with the human heart. It's a slick operation. They want to grab a microphone and start preaching. And it's dirty as sin, black as midnight inside. But to hide that, they want to talk to everybody else. And you ask them to break down that word and rightly divide it, can't do it. Cause they run off of what? Emotionalism and a hyperbole, just working people up. Everybody jump for joy, jump for joy, jump, jump, jump. You're going to jump like a fool and crazy. Everybody jumping into hell. Jumping into the pit. But you wait to get worked up and start holy dancing and shouting. With all that tight stuff on, because you after that deacon in the cone over there, you got all that tight stuff shouting. So he can, and somebody try to help you, you push them back until he come. <laughs> then, you, then you're faint in his arms. <laughs> Can't walk then, you know. Because Leroy finally grabbed the hold of me. This stuff here is a bunch of dumb, stupid junk from the club. The church ain't nothing but the club. Why don't you just get a bar and get you a DJ and everybody just come in for real like you really want to come in and stop playing with God. Why you want to import that junk in the church and do it? Just go to the club and stop trying to run game. That's why I said hypocrite a minute ago. You hypocrite. You got this beam in your eye trying to get a speck out of somebody. You're a hypocrite. Man, this thing is everywhere. Guys are cooking up all kinds of schemes to make money off of folks. Now you got the relationship gurus. See, me and my wife, we minister to young girls and young guys. We're trying to make them into men, and she's trying to make them into young ladies. They talk a lot about purity, and you got a purity ring on now. My purity ring, a whore with a purity ring on. <laughs> because there's nothing in the inside been changed now. But what are you doing? I am doing penitence, not repenting. See, when you do penitence, what do you do? You outwardly conform to what somebody told you to be like because you never repented. So you try to show somebody your purity room. See that P on the ring? That stands for purity. I am no longer engaging in sex. I know, but your mind is crazy. Your mind is sexed out. You fantasize about sex all day. See, you can change the out. Jesus called them whited sepulchers. You wash the outside and, and appear outwardly clean to men, but inside you're full of dead men's bones. And ministries are set up to accommodate those people. You got guys in some skinny jeans standing there trying to teach you how to be a man. First of all, bro, take them skinny jeans off. And got a little jacket on, skin tight jacket. This jacket look like a from a woman's pantsuit or something, like Hillary's pantsuit, and some skinny jeans on and some penny loafers. Talking about, I'm standing like one of the Supremes. You know how the Supremes would stand when they were singing? <laughs> Stop in the name of love. He tried to teach you how to be a man. Penny loafers, skinny jeans, and a little poncho. I need to, go get my bat out of the car. Run out to the car and get my bat. This is how stupid all this is. You standing there looking at it, it's crazy. I'm saying it's crazy and everybody looking at me like I'm, I'm a nut. It, it, this, you want to stand up in the middle of this stuff and say, does anybody see anything wrong with any of this? They'll shout you down. No, that's, you're the devil. I'm the devil? What's happening? Satan's soulish magic. See, soul power can emulate spiritual power, and you'll think it's God. It's nothing but soul power. It's magic. They can put the divine this spell on you, and you'll think, God is moving. But it's just soul power. 
T.D. Jakes has mastered soul power. And he's hidden something inside of you, it's, and you feel it. It's soul power. It's got a power behind it. And what do demons hide out? In soul power. That's where the demons come in. Demons ride soul power into your soul. So if a person is soulish, the Bible calls them earthly, sensual, and demonic. Through soul power, the demons couple themselves to that soul power and flow right into your mind into your soul and embed themselves. And they'll build up resistance in you against anything that's true. Anything coming to liberate you from soul power, the devil stands up. Until you get sick of it and really repent and want to know Jesus for real. See, the only way to get free from soul power is to really want to know Jesus for real. And guess what? He'll, he'll, he'll go through all kinds of walls to get to you. When he sees you really want him, He'll come see you and get you because he sees what? The cry of the heart, the sincere desire of the heart to really know him. He'll come, that'll make him draw to you. But when you're a hypocrite and you're really trying to do something slick and run game on him, he'll send a strong delusion and let you believe you're all right. Won't say anything to you. And you cascade down into hell and can't even figure out how you got there. He didn't say one thing to you and made you believe you are doing fine. You're a blessing. You're anointed. And he's gonna see you in eternity and send you right to hell. He didn't deceive you, you deceived yourself. He just let it stand because you never became sincere and you never repented. It's dangerous to walk in this right here because you can deceive yourself all the way through the process and be lost in deception. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It's a narrow way and few there be that find it. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, but this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. That is the law of giving in the New Testament that displaced and replaced tithing. There is no New Testament tithe. It's the law of giving. That means you give God a body on the altar and the Holy Ghost directs you on what to do. That's it. There is nothing more anybody can teach you about giving anything in church. But what do they do? The magicians use condemnation and bondage to make you feel obligated when the man just said not grudgingly nor of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. So if you're bound and obligated, you, you, don't, you don't have any cheer in you because you're being threatened with going to hell for not giving 10% of every dollar. But guess what? He get that bitly paid for because folks are used to being slaves. Slaves only answer to the master. Now the master has become your pastor. And you sit there bound and chained and hating me for saying it. Watch how people stand up trying to defend tithing when it's not benefiting them at all. It has been of no benefit to them whatsoever. It's only benefiting that preacher and that prophetess up front. And yet they defend it wholeheartedly. Because they've been brainwashed to believe that God favors them for paying a tithe. $1,000 lines, $500 lines, $250, $100, $50 line. After they get the $50, they let anybody come. Because that, that, that little chicken scratch you bring in $10, you know, hey, put that over there in that bucket. But the $1,000 person that's welcome, they come up that check just. And you've been made a fool out of. The devil's making a fool out of you. But you don't even care. Why? You have the recognition of the people in the church. That's what you want. You want them to know, 
I got $1,000. That's why Tyler Perry stood up with T.D. J. Thompson, I'm giving a million dollars. He wanted the folks to, whoo, whoo, whoo. And of course, Jake's wife began to, to throw buckets of blood on him, just, just walking all back, just, <laughs> like the Lord just moving. That's all game. Now the rest of the folk feel obligated to follow his lead. He gave a million dollars, so you could at least give $10,000. As a doctor sitting there, and you lawyers, y'all need to be good for about eight, $9,000. Housewives need to at least have $500. I'll tell you how, how much money I'm joking right there in that day. It's game. It's all game. It's con men at work. Slick operators, smooth operators. And you warn them, you pound them, you tell them. And the folks hate you. Why? Because they love this present evil world. And the cosmocrator that rules it, the word cosmocrator means a world ruler. Satan is the cosmocrator of the world. They're in covenant with Satan. And they hate Jesus. Because Jesus cares nothing for this world. Jesus is not trying to sustain the world. He's not. Economic systems, educational systems, political systems, religious systems, all of these systems are the enemy of God. So therefore, if you turn on them, you are God's friend. The Bible says if you're a friend of the world, you're the enemy of God. Conversely, guess what? If you're a friend of God, you're an enemy of the world. They'll hate you. That's normal. So what's happening? Weak, wounded, religious people claiming to be Christians can't, can't take the volatile hatred of the world. So they try to find a way to peaceably coexist with the world because I can't take you not liking me. Unless you can embrace hatred and enjoy it, you can't walk with Jesus. You got to embrace the hatred of the world. Expect it. You got to basically just, just, just bathe in it. Walk into arenas despised. And it's glorious. Oh, the hatred is beautiful. <laughs> Till you get like that, you can't walk with the Lord because the Lord is a hated, despised commodity on earth. He is an entity that is despised by this world. And for you to identify with him, they will hate you. The Bible says the servant is not above his master. And as a bond servant of Jesus, you can't be above your Lord. It's reciprocity. You're sowing to the spirit, getting back from the spirit, at the expense of sowing to the flesh. Everybody in the flesh hates Christ. You walk into most churches, they hate Christ there. You better know that. You get up there talking about Jesus a lot. Thank you, Jesus. You get a real Holy Ghost believer in a church. Man, they don't like you. Now, you can talk about the Antichrist, that false Jesus, and they'll know your spirit. But if you got the Holy Ghost, when soon as you open your mouth, everybody's going to know that ain't the same spirit right there. You said the very same name they said, Jesus, but you said it full of Holy Ghost power. Well, let me tell you about Jesus up in here now, what he's done for me. Sit them down. Oh no. Because you're drawing attention away from the master, pastor, blaster, and putting the attention on Jesus. That's what the force is you feel. Everybody in these churches, especially these Baptist churches, make the pastor the king, and Jesus is despised. All the whores that sleeping with the pastor don't like you. All the homosexuals that are sleeping with the pastor don't like you. All the church mothers that are serving the pastor don't like you. All the deacons that are sleeping with the same women the pastor is sleeping with don't like you. Don't nobody like you up in here. You got to know that. Expect that. Embrace that. Walk in that. Love it. It's what we're here for. We're here to bear witness against the unrighteousness. We bear witness against it. Your very presence bears witness. Why? Because you prove that somebody can really be saved. 
See, you're the evidence that Jesus can really save somebody. And then you shine a light on them as a hypocrite, a play actor that has never been saved. Most preachers and pastors have never been saved. I'll say that again. Most of the folks you see in pulpits have never been born again. They've never been saved. They've been to seminary. They got doctorates. They got head knowledge. They got a bunch of information and research, but they've never been born again. Know that about church before you deal with anything churchy. And it'll, it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache trying to figure out why they treated me like this. You got a revelation of God for real. You really got born again and really, and really got saved. You're, the, you're on the outside looking in to most churches, man. You got to know that. Like it, embrace it, and walk in it. So 2 Corinthians 9, 6 tells you now, you want a, a big return, sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. That's not just about money. That's about everything in life. Put a lot of effort into it, you'll get back a big return. That's the way it goes. I was talking to little young Kennedy last night. Kennedy is in school now, changed the major to math. I said, as a math major, the sky's the limit. You can do a whole lot of stuff with a math major. Immediately when she changed the, her, her, her major, made straight A's last semester on a report card, she got a, a scholarship for $8,000 off the top, a STEM scholarship, science, technology, engineering, and math. $8,000 handed to her on a silver platter just from being somebody astutely doing her work and just just sowing bountifully. And guess what? The system all by itself will make you reap bountifully. It works. You put yourself out there and you're going to get back. Teachers over here, down here in Clayton County, science and math teacher, $12,000 if you sign up. They went and studied the stuff. They got the credentials. The reward is the money because they sold the time, they studied, they were there studying and burning midnight oil while other folk were at the club. So they reap what they sold. And everybody talking about they're mad at them or what, what you're mad at them for. They sold, they reap. That's the way it goes. Don't begrudge anybody doing something in advancing. You tell somebody like Oprah Winfrey, she sold and reaped. Now, you don't want the reward she's got to get now because it's from the flesh and the world. She paid a price somewhere that you and I don't know about. Because the devil just don't dole out stuff now. You got to sow and reap in the devil's kingdom. He can't bypass the law of reciprocity. He's got to abide by it. You come to the devil, you got to put something on the table for him to give you something. Ask these hip-hop boys who had to have their trunk turned up in somebody's office to become a big-time rap artist. You got to give up the trunk, boy, to reap over here. It's the way it is. Everything is a game. Everything is a return on investment down here. Somebody had to put something on the line to get back what they got. It's the law of reciprocity. You sow, you reap. It's got to happen every time. Hosea chapter 8. The prophet Hosea chapter 8. I think Hosea is the next book after Daniel, Old Testament. Hosea chapter, chapter 8. Verse 7, for they have sown the wind, and they shall reap what? Letting you know what about sowing and reaping. It always comes back multiplied. You see an orange tree over there? Guess where that orange tree came from? An orange seed. And the oranges have more seeds in them that you can plant to bring forth more oranges. So when you sow something small, 
you're going to reap a multiplied return. So to the wind, you get back a whirlwind. So you didn't figure on all this coming back at you, and you can sow, you can sow for a period of time, and God will let you. But when it hits you, you end up dead. See, because you sold over a period of time, and then when the, the reciprocity kicked in and returned to you, you had sown enough to kill you. Play with it all you want. Folks just didn't get AIDS just, you know, just off the cuff. They sold to the wind and reaped the whirlwind. That's the way it goes. Your life was being governed by sowing and reaping. You just didn't know it. I don't have to be you. I don't have to see what you did. You began to get higher levels of return as you proceeded into sin. That stuff was cooking your hide because you were sowing and reaping. You cuss out three people, guess what you're going to get? Cussed out by 50. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, it's coming back. God will make sure it comes back to see you. Sow to the wind, you reap a whirlwind. And they shall reap the whirlwind. It, it has no stalk. The bud shall yield, no meal. So it, if so be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. He letting you know, when you're doing that evil, no matter what you do, you'll never get a return of any value. Everything you get back is going to be taken from you, eaten up, destroyed, or decayed because you're doing evil. You can't win in this. Hosea 10, verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, and then you'll reap in mercy. Break up what? That's the hard soil inside of you, the hardened heart. Break it up. Break it up, man. Let God penetrate so you'll get mercy. Folk turn a deaf ear to God and get stoic against God, and it's bringing about their destruction. It's their own demise they're going to reap. Let God penetrate so you'll, you'll also reap mercy from God. You don't want judgment from God. You want God's mercy. Judgment will have you six feet under in a grave. John chapter 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. Man, folks, man, I, you know, it's hard to understand folks. You try to tell them and they just sit there looking at you. Silly. Look at John chapter 1, verse 15. John bare witness of him, referring to Jesus, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You hear people talking about grace? Grace is not found outside of Jesus. It's Jesus' grace that we walk in, not our own. People talk about like God, God's grace covers us. No, it's the grace of Jesus. He was full of grace and truth. To the degree that you amalgamate with him and come into him, and become one with him through a union with him, God's grace is imparted to you. Grace is not imparted to rebels against Christ. Conformity to Christ is now the, your portion. You receive grace for grace. His grace imparts grace to us. Now you've got this super grace stuff that says, in my sin, grace covers me. You're going to hell. You're going to hell believing that. You better get into Christ, obey him, and conform to his will, his ways, and his wishes in order to receive grace from God. Anything outside of that is a damnable lie. They're telling you a lie. Joseph Prince. It's a lie. Super grace. The, I received the revelation of God's grace. You received a revelation from the devil is what you did. 
The world is about to reap what it has sown. What is it sown? For the last 50 years, you've seen anarchy, insanity, and madness sown into the people. Now you're seeing the reaping take place. Just look around. These people look like something from a, 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 a disaster movie. They look like walking zombies. They look like the walking dead. Crazy. Look at the hairstyles. Look at the physical countenances. It's crazy. Guys walking around with nap knots all on top of their heads looking like ignats or somebody. Buckwheat. Looking like buckwheat off the little rascals. I'm looking at a barber at the barber shop. I would turn in my credentials before I cut somebody's head like that. You know, they line it all up, and then you got nap knots sticking straight up on somebody's head, and then you cut a, a lightning bolt on the side of it with a star. And they got walk out happy. You want to say, hey, man, what, what's wrong with you? What you mean, what's wrong with me? I look good. You sown to the wind. We're reaping a whirlwind. Folk with pink and green and purple hair and all this crazy. This is a rejected generation of people that will do anything to get attention. And see, the devil now is mocking people and making fun of them. I think the devil actually sits back and tries to figure out what can I do next to laugh at. I believe he and the fallen angels and the demons do things now just to make fun of people, to see if they'll go for it. Got a little girl weighing 100 pounds, and then she's going to get 40-inch breasts and a big old donkey butt. Now, she got a little waist because she's skinny anyway. And then she get that big old giant butt and the big old brain walking around. About to topple over. You know, you push her a little bit, she'll topple over and kill herself, bust her mouth all open. With all this silicone and all this stuff, the devil's doing stuff just to make fun of people. I think sometimes the devil is shocked that it worked. I think he does things that think, uh, well, I don't know if they'll go for this, but let's just, they really believe this trash. He's, tr he's pushing the envelope. He's coming up with crazy, insane junk to see if the human race will buy into it. You actually bought a conference ticket to go and, a concert ticket to go and see Lil Wayne. I mean, who would go and see Lil Wayne? These girls brag about having ba a baby by Lil Wayne. I wouldn't even tell it. You are telling the public that you laid down with Lil Wayne. You, you, you're proud of that? They are proud of this. They are proud of, the, they are proud of being with these guys. They like this. This is something that is accommodating. You see beautiful girls with the creature from the Black Lagoon as a boyfriend. And they all into the guy. They like the guy. It's like, see, it's something that's happened to the mind. Back in the day, they wouldn't be seen on the street with these guys. But now being rusty, unkept, and nasty is in vogue. It's like being trashed out is in vogue. So you walk around grungy, nasty. Look like you stink even if you don't. You look like you do. And that's in vogue. And I say that, everybody like that is offended by it. This thing is the result of reciprocity. It was sown from the days of all that Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, and all that hip hop in its early stages and rap, going on back to Cool and the Gang, and, and, and the higher players, and the barcades, and all that stuff. A lot of stuff, all those lyrics were full of sex, sexual stuff and perversion. Prince was singing about oral sex back in the 70s and 80s, singing about head. All this stuff was being sang about by these folk, sowing, sowing, sowing into the wind, and now we got a whirlwind. And only God can save a person now. The persons, the people's, the people's collective minds are so reprobate now that only God can save them. There's nothing we can do about it. We might as well take our hands off of the thing. You can't save anybody. 
It's going to take God. Now, the best we can do is present our bodies to God sacrificially. Let him fill us with the Holy Ghost. And whatever the Holy Ghost does about it, that's what will get done. But as far as me sitting down trying to figure out how to reach somebody and save them and coming up with some kind of a plan of attack to save somebody, you are wasting your time, your precious time. Their minds are too far gone. They're entertained by the Housewives of Atlanta and the Kardashians and, and the Braxtons and all this crazy junk. The lyrics of these rap songs would make a dog vomit. They listen to them casually and it doesn't bother them at all. Especially a young woman, you would figure a young girl would never be able to ingest this filth. They think it's funny, they love it. And they become it. Did you know that they become the rap music they listen to? They become 10 cent street walking hoes because they ingest that filth all day from Lil Wayne and Future and 2 Chains and Rick Ross and Walk a Flock of Flame. Who, what guy you know would have his name be Walk a Flock of Flame? They ingest this garbage all day long. You sow to the wind, you get back a whirlwind. Look at Kanye West. Kanye West is almost crazy now. Say he's trying to recoup his memory. Probably put him through electric shock treatment because he opened his mouth against Jay-Z on stage. You saw he disappeared into the hospital. This is a controlled world. It's a controlled environment. These jokers play for keeps. You gave your soul to the devil, then you're going to turn on the devil? The devil's going to get you. The devil don't tolerate rebellion in his kingdom. You sold your soul to me. You gave your life to me, so I got jurisdiction over you. When he came out of the hospital, he met with Donald Trump. He didn't say a word in that meeting. But I just want to take a picture. I just want to take a picture with Mr. Trump. Because they had beat him down. Married to a clan of witches. Married into a clan of witches. Controlled. Mind program witches. MK Ultra victims, they'll walk around with that kidding program on them, that beta program, which is the sexual perverse program. That's what's wrong with these women. They've been mind programmed to be sexual seductresses. Rihanna. You see, Miley Cyrus almost lost her mind behind it. Britney Spears almost went crazy behind it. If they filter through Disney, they're going to be mind programmed to be beta kittens, sex programming to put themselves out there naked and be seductive and be tramps. But you lose your mind. You, you lose your identity. You lose who you are in that programming. Look at movies that come on. They tell you about it on these different movies like the born identity and all of that, what they can do to a person to break you down and then put another personality in you to use you to do their bidding. This stuff is real. Monarch mind programming. The Manchurian candidate, who they can program to be a sniper and kill cold-bloodedly with no feelings. All this stuff is real. You don't know what your mind can take before it breaks down and does the will of the devil. This is why you can't play with what you ingest. These folks are not normal. Beyonce is not normal. Rihanna's not no normal. Nick, Nicki Minaj is not normal. Katy Perry is not normal. Madonna's not normal. Programming. Programming. And they all have been assigned handlers to do the bidding of the devil. This thing is dirty. I was looking at this guy the other day. There's a, there's a child, he's a girl sex trafficker. See a lot of these girls disappearing. He said, we traffic these girls, we get them from wherever we can pick them up. Remember this girl disappeared in Aruba a few years ago. Went down with her class after graduating and she disappeared off the face of the earth. This guy was from South America. He said he was a, he was a slave trafficker of these young girls. They make, made a movie called Taken about it. This was real stuff. He says, we sell these girls to the highest bidders. They come from the Middle East and around the world. He said, if they try to escape, well, if they cause us problems, we kill them. We've killed, he said, we've killed over four or 500 girls over the last seven years.
and we just kill them and bury them out in the field because they are troublemakers. And people trying to figure out where are all these people going. You got a child trafficking ring that will steal young kids. They just arrested a guy in the Philippines who had an apartment in America and been over there 17 years making porno flicks with little, little girls and boys in a beat up nasty apartment. He's broadcasting over the internet live porno with those kids having six, five, three, two years old. And then people trying to figure out where these kids going. They've been sold into slavery for the, for the addictions of these pedophiles. There are animals on this planet. There are demon-possessed animals in our midst. That's why you need some power. That's why you can't afford to be a nominal church person playing. We're going up against hell that has manifested itself. And you somewhere trying to laugh and joke and mad at me for bringing it up. That's why we don't want your kind around this. We don't want religious people around this. You're detrimental to the war effort. We need folk that see this thing for what it is, and they're ready to mean business with the devil because the devil's playing for keeps. He's a murderer. He's a killer. He has no heart. He's cold-blooded. While people are playing and laughing with him, he's ready to slit your throat. Everybody wants to play with him, too. Choke is nobody to play with. Look at John chapter 15, verse 18. Look at this. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus speaking. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. This is, these are the promises of God. Look at these if-then statements. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this comes to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the father, he shall testify of me. And you, and you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. That you should not be offended when they begin to persecute you, persecute you and hate you. Don't be offended. That's why I'm telling you beforehand they are going to hate you. They shall put you out of the synagogues in our common vernacular today. They're going to put you out of the church. You're not going to get invitations if you preach what I preach to come to somebody's church. I don't get invitations to come to churches because they don't want this in there. They're going to put you out of the synagogue because the church world is the very citadel of Satan. Yes, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. Get ready for this now. They're going to kill you, and they're doing God a favor. This actually took place in a big way during the Spanish Inquisition in the times of the Roman Catholic persecution of the saints. They killed everybody that wouldn't come up under the yoke of the pope as a rebel. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them, and these things that I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. So as these things begin to break out in America, don't start running around getting shocked and not able, shocked and not able to believe it's happening. I believe a guy like Trump, although not perfect, is, a, is putting the brakes on the persecution that was going to come at us full tilt. The devil was, was preparing to release 
a torrent of persecution against the church. Hate speech from preaching against homosexuality. They were trying to force bakers to bake cakes for homosexual couples. All this stuff was coming like a freight train to persecute the church. But at least Trump is saying no more Christian persecution. Free speech for these people preaching the gospel. We're not going to try to penalize them for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know the idiosyncrasies about what he is evil in and what organization he belongs to and all of that. All we need is the time to bring in this harvest and then let the mess go to the pit of hell. We just need time to ingather God's people from wherever they might be. And after that, they can do whatever they want to with this mess. We're not here to sustain this. We're here to do a job in it to get God's few people out. You know, Lot's day, the few that are coming out, Noah's day, the eight on the boat. That's it. And both times, remember, extraction of his people, flood the place or burn it up. Stop thinking these big, broad pictures. That everybody's saved. Walking in the church is thinking everybody's a Christian. When you open your mouth, you find out hardly anybody's a Christian up in here. David said, I was for peace. But when I spoke up, I found out you were for war. They don't like Jesus. Jesus is a righteous man. Jesus is a holy man. Jesus is an honorable man. Most of all, Jesus is a man. The heterosexual man is despised on this planet right now. And any woman that joins to a heterosexual man will be hated. Now you can join to a homosexual man and, 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 com and com compliment him, supplement him, they'll love you. But if you say, look, I'm with this man, they're gonna monitor what that man said and turn to you and say, you with him? Yes, I stand with him 100%. They're going to transfer that hatred to you because they're going to see you as identifying with male authority and not homosexuality and feminism and lesbianism. That's what we're fighting against now. That's the unseen mystery of iniquity. I'm trying to, I try to pound this into every message I preach that the mystery of iniquity is sodomy. Your participation in sodomy made you the enemy of Christ and Antichrist. And anything that's limiting you and holding you back from full operation in the kingdom of God is, a, is attached to the remnant vestiges of your sodomite activity in the world. That's what's doing it. That's why you can't sell the farm, because it still got you hung up between two worlds. Sodomites can't be a saint. They will hang up and circle in the wilderness and become religious and talk about it all day. Because they can't do anything about it, so they just talk about it. They, they provide commentary because they can't participate with the body of Christ because of the sodomite nature that still possesses them. So what can you expect according to John 15? Persecution. Persecution. That's what's coming our way. Told you went to a church the other day, to a funeral, a little Baptist church, well, a big Baptist church. Boy, if you had stood up and said something in that funeral about what was going on concerning the Lord and trying to call people to the altar, they probably would have killed you. Killed you because you conducted an altar call to save some souls from a burning hell. It's bad, man. It's real bad now. It's real bad. This thing is housed in church. You're looking for the very essence of where the malignant tumor has grown from? Church. That's where it is, man. That's the root of it. The citadel of Satan is the local church house. Can't you see that if you walk in there with the power of God on you and you save souls that you're called in that environment money? Let's say you, you come into church like that at a funeral. Walk up to the casket, open it up, and raise that man from the dead. Now, immediately, you became the pastor of the church. 
Because at that point, the guy that's preaching is a clown because he can't do it. Remember the Bible always said when Jesus did something, all, all eyes fixed on, fixated on him. He grabbed everybody's attention because he had power. He had authority. He had the ability to do something about something. Now, just imagine God ramping this thing up where you got Holy Ghost power and miracles backing you up. Immediately, the clash will take place between those that are religious and using the folks for their money and getting money from them and you that's setting them free. It just takes an hour or two for God to ramp it up. All he's got to do is uh, just, just bathe you in Holy Ghost power that you can do supernatural things and the thing's going to blow up like an atomic bomb. See, that's the thing that's going to make it go up to another level and separate the wheat from the tares. When the real church has operative Holy Ghost power to not talk but do, man, that religious system is going to raise up against you because of the money. Remember, the Bible says the love of money is at the root of all the evil. What's going on? Back in 1913, they met on Jekyll Island off the coast of, of, of Georgia here and established the Federal Reserve System for this country, but they got the Federal Reserve Banks all over the world. They're amalgamating control of the money supply. They use money to control you. Don't you know the control of the money is able to determine where you live, where you go, what you drive, what you can or cannot eat, if you can go out to eat or if you got to stay home and cook for yourself, if you can take a vacation or not? You don't believe that. You save up some money and go to a car dealership and go and buy an $80,000 car cash. You know what's going to happen to you? What's going to happen? They're going to come to your house and, and want to know one thing. Where you get all that money from? You go over $10,000, they're tracking you. Money is nothing but paper with green ink on it. It has no intrinsic value whatsoever. This, 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 this money says this is a Federal Reserve note. What's a note used for? To alleviate, to alleviate debts. It's a Federal Reserve note that has no gold standard to back it. It's just money that they printed up at their discretion. They control you by doing what? They either do what? Expand the money supply or contract. They, they either expand it, they, they put it out in the system, or they take it back from the system. If the economy heats up too hot, they pull the money back. That'll cool it off. See, it's all, this is all a game. None of this is real. What's all the stuff going on with Russia right now? You see, I'm going to tell you stuff behind the scenes that make no sense to you, to you if you don't know this. What's the major export from Russia? Gas and oil. Gas and oil. Everything down here is about the gas and oil. Whenever you see anything going on, it's the gas and the oil. Because that's where the money is. We don't go to the Middle East and fight wars over setting the people free and because there's some kind of a Hitler type tyrant over there. The Middle East is full of gas and oil. Everything centers around the flow of money into the coffers of the filthy rich. Don't you know they don't want you to be rich? Why? They won't be, up, don't, they won't be about to rule over. If everybody's rich like me, I got no subjects to be king over. When you got the rich ruling over the poor, as the devil's master plan to dominate the human race? Who is the problem in this scenario? The middle class. What are they trying to exterminate? The middle class. The war is against the middle class. You know how they call Trump a populist? You know what a populist is? A person for the people, for the common people. That's, what a, that's why they keep calling him a populist. 
They keep they use the term over and over again on the news. Trump is a populist. He's for the people, the common man. Because the devil scenario is the rich over the poor. So why they don't like him, that's why they're trying to crush him. Because he's a barrier to the new world order and the global bankers. Why do the pulpit stay quiet? Because they're getting paid not to reveal the plan. Jakes can't stay rich revealing this plan. They'll kick him to the curb. The people have been brainwashed not to come to liberators. They go to slave masters because of the monarch programming done to their minds. They think Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton are leaders. From programming, mental programming done to them, they can't even identify liberators. They go right to the master's house and sit up in a slave camp and then start marching around with signs picketing. Tom, we, we, we organ, all, all, all Al Sharpton would do is, is organize a march. Why is that? That's what we're getting paid to do. Because you know nothing's going to happen from it. You're not threatening anything. You, you walking around telling them, we shall overcome. It's been doing it for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. We shall overcome. Are you going to help? We overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto death. And you still talking about futuristically, you shall overcome one day. They get paid to keep folks in a certain mindset, a certain point of view, and certain bondages so you won't rise up. What do they need you for? They need you to be consumers because they need your money. Now here's the mystery of the gospel. This is why they hate this message now, that, 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 that whole corporate structure, I hate this message, you know why it does? The gospel, you know what it does to you? It stops you from being a consumer. That's what the gospel does to you. You don't go and pull down any porno movies from the internet for $35, $40. Cause you're not a consumer of pornography. You didn't stop by the store on your way here and buy a pack of cigarettes. You ain't buying vodka and gin and vermouth and all that stuff. You're not out in Las Vegas. Can't you see a revival will shut down the money flow to those that have bound folks through their appetites to be consumers? This is why they feed your kids a steady flow of filth to make them consumers of drugs, alcohol, porno, filth, gutter rot, because somebody's getting rich off of the money that's flowing through these dumbed down morons they're releasing on the street to buy this trash every day. That's why they want you young boys smoking black and miles. Somebody making money off them black and miles. They want your daughter to be a whore. Cause somebody making money off her birth control pills. The gospel preached to a young girl's soul to get her saved, she don't buy no birth control pills cause she ain't having sex. This is the, see this is, this is the, this is the element, this is the thing behind the scene that you don't understand. Why is everybody venting on the gospel? Why they hate Jesus? The slaves hate him because the slave have been programmed to be a consumer in the devil's matrix. See, they have an appetite for the drugs and the alcohol and the illicit sex. They hate Jesus because Jesus says, man, release yourself from that and they can't enslave you anymore. You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free from the devil's matrix that has made you a consumer of his filth and you are actually financing the devil's kingdom, and in so doing, you finance your own destruction. You're paying the devil to kill you. Cirrhosis of the liver, you drank yourself to death and, and paid the devil to provide the liquor. You overdosed on heroin and paid the devil for the drugs and the needle.
They hate the truth. They hate it. That's why they'll pay Barack Obama $400,000 for a speech, because he's binding the people's minds to the matrix. That's why they do They pay Hillary Clinton $200,000 for a speech, to bind your mind to the matrix. That's why they got Steve Harvey on TV. He binds your mind to the matrix. Anybody that will bind your mind to the matrix and make you a consumer, they will pay that person millions of dollars based on how many followers you can cook up. See, if Jace can show them that I've got a contingent of people that I can affect and infect to anchor them to your matrix, it'll make them a billionaire because it's all about control and where the money flows. And notice how people don't give to that which will liberate them. They give to that which will bind them. You know why? Because slaves hate, hate, despise. They can't stand personal accountability. Called the master is responsible for us. That's why I don't give to this, because I tell them, I'm not here to lead nobody. You come, drink down the waters that are freely given, let it change you, now you go do the job. Oh, no, 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 no. I will serve you as a master of the church. Put yourself a gold throne up front, get some robes and go to tuning up, and we'll give you all the money you want. You can drive whatever you want and live in a $3 million mansion. Just don't make me accountable. This is, this, is, this is what we're hitting up against. I'm telling you in real time what we're hitting against. We're hitting against people that are monarch, mind-controlled slaves. The devil has programmed their minds to be a slave. And you'll go right to the back of the bus with nobody even making you go to the back of the bus. Because you've been programmed to ride in the back of the bus. Everything down here is trying to stop people from coming to Jesus. Because they'll stop being consumers of the devil's merchandise. The devil was trafficking from day one, selling merchandise. Trying to sell himself as the person to follow. Got a third of the angels to believe in. That joke has been trafficking ever since. Came to Eve as a trafficker. You can be a god, we can be somebody. You can lift up above this. You can be, I can make you better than all this now. He's trafficking. It's all about the money. Trace the money, you'll trace the evil. That's what it's all about. Can't you see that the consumers of evil are the ones that drive the economy? You think drugs are on the street by mistake and they can't stop it? Drugs is a multi, multi-trillion dollar business. You wanna stop drugs? You shut down whole nation's economies if you stop drugs. You think all these American troops in Lebanon to save folks' lives? You know what they're over there trying to protect? The poppy fields. You read the book Lucifer's Children, didn't you? Saw the opium trade, they went into China and made all the Chinese opium addicts. The Chinese mad about that to this very day. They raped and pillaged the country by making the Chinese opium addicts and sold them opium and got that money. It's about the money. Get the money, get the money, get the money. It's all about the money, but guess what? There is a law of reciprocity. You got to pay for what you're doing. You got to pay for raping and pillaging and destroying generations of human beings. You got to come to that place where the cup of iniquity is full and God is going to come with rage in his eyes to destroy everything in sight. See, the day of wrath in the Bible you see that in Revelation 16 with the vials poured out. The Bible calls it the day of God's vengeance. It's the wrath of God coming to seek vengeance for what has been done to people and against him on this planet. Don't worry. God 
has everything right on schedule. But that's the behind the scenes force of what you, when you're in a in religious environment, you pick up that resistance, that's what it is. It's the appetites of the people bound to slavery to be institutionalized puppets for the devil to use. And you hit against it. You can't free a slave that loves his or her chains. They love the chains. They love the membership. They love the environment. They love being a part of it. They love being a mason and an eastern star and a, sor and a sorority member and a fraternity member. That's what churches are built on. People who are bound to the matrix, slaves to it. They join these fraternal organizations to belong to the matrix. You bring it up in church, they will respond violently against you. That's why I tell folks this is not for everybody. This is not for people that are nominal and play play and make believe people. It's for people that are forsaking everything to come to Christ, holding on to nothing. Remember the word antichrist speaks of that which comes against Christ and comes to replace Christ. Found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he talks about that man of sin that's coming down the lane in just a minute to be the antichrist. The reprobate minds are yoked to monetary control. If you notice people, everybody's striving to get more money, to buy more things, to be more acceptable, and to shine before the masses. They're striving to get that money for me to be counted as a member of the elite people. Trying to move up monetarily, so I can show off to folk what I drive, where I live, and what I wear. It's all about the money and how the world views me because I got money. What's going to happen? I believe that God has a chosen elect people. He's gonna call to the forefront and the separator is going to be the miracles. The book of Acts stands there like steel looking at all of us. The book of Acts just stares at us, saying, man, where is this book of Acts going to break out? When the spirit going to break out and something really happen? You know, I have a, I don't, I don't want to call it a, a complaint against heaven, but if you look around, the devil's really not your problem. Fallen angels, demons, crazy people, sinners, thieves, robbers, murderers, rapists, that's not really the problem. The problem really is that you want God to do something. Yes. See, that's, that's, the, that's the angst and the, and the thing you got down there, you stick it in your craw. So I told God last night, last night I, prayed, I said, God, you know what? Heaven is my problem. I got a problem with it. I got a controversy with heaven. The, you know, the cloud of witnesses, the angels, all they're all up there. Moses and David, everybody up there, everybody hanging around the throne, looking like they serve the throne. I'm saying we're down here, and the devil's doing all this stuff, but the devil ain't my problem because the devil is a constant. See, he's, not, he's just the devil. That's just going to be here. My problem is a non-responsive God to the, what the devil's doing, you know, then you say, well, how do we bridge across the responses from heaven and let's stop talking? I shut up a lot of times because I'm sick of talking about stuff. I don't want to talk to nobody no more about nothing, concerning nothing down here. I hate this place. Anybody ingrained in this and they're bathed in it, I don't want to talk about them. I don't want, to, I don't want them talking to me. Where is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to engage this thing and let's just move across here and leave scorched earth behind us and get this over with. I mean, I talk to people every day. People are getting sick of this, sick of this place, fed up with it. I mean, how much can you examine on Facebook story after story about some tragedy, some pedophile doing something, some weirdo killing somebody, somebody with a truck laden bomb blowing up people in a marketplace? I mean, I mean how much can you tell? I, I turn that stuff off now. You know, I mean, it, I, I gave myself a news blackout this week. I didn't listen to no, I just listened to praise and worship music all week. Because the controversy is not here, it's in heaven. We need an a outflow from heaven through us to the masses. This damned up river needs to flow. He says, out of our belly shall flow a river of living water. Where's the water? 
And I'm not talking about being worked up again to some emotional state. Where is something really happening? Lazarus is dead. Bartimaeus is really blind. You see what I'm saying? It's real. The man at the gate called beautiful is crippled. It's no longer discussions and talk and analytic, analytics and theories and all this Bible quotation and what the Bible says and the word says. And, you know, Price, you see, you're getting to a place where you're becoming a person that doesn't believe God and you're becoming, you know, antagonistic toward God. Now you're murmuring and complaining against God. No, I'm not. This is all based on what the Bible says in Acts and what happened in Acts. And we're reading it right in front of us without actualization and no participation. We're just outside of reading the pages of the Bible and there's nothing breaking out down here. You can't sustain yourself in a desert with no water forever. You got to have some kind of, re some kind of revival or refreshing to come upon the people to reinvigorate them, to get them to move and be actively participating. We've got a dried up desert going through the motions of church every week, circling in a wilderness called church on Wednesday and Sunday night from Bible study to church service, and it's, a, it's actually nothing going on and nothing happening, and everybody's pretending like the Lord is moving. Man, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't stay right here. I cannot stay right here. You reach a point where, where you're better off dead than like this. It'll be more, more merciful to kill a person in a desert before you let them die slowly in the desert. If you're not going to supply them with water and food and substance, just put them out of their misery. You see what I'm saying? A mercy killing is justified when you have nothing to look forward to but anguish and, 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 and all these types of things. When you got a person hooked up to life support in the hospital and they're dead, basically outside of the life support, unhook all that junk, man. Unhook that junk. I mean, that's just anguish and agony to see them there suffering like this with all this junk pumping and all these bells and whistles swirling, and they're dead. As soon as you take them off of that junk, they're dead in five minutes because it's all artificial life support. So it's time for us to unplug from religion and everything that's got an artificial resemblance to Christ and say, God, you know what? We got zero. We got nothing. Per adventure, we might just get a response for real and really get resurrection life to come upon us. But to keep pretending like there's something going on that's not, talking louder, yelling louder, running faster, and Lazarus is still dead. Bartimaeus is still blind. Jairus' daughter is over there in the bed, dead. And, we, and all this stuff, all this gymnastics just going on, just lights and, and billowing, billowing uh, smoke and whistles and all this stuff. This, this, what is this, the, the circus or, the, or, or, or a club or something? With no practical experiences. I mean, somebody got to just come to terms with the fact that, hey, we've sown, prayed, we fasted, we've given what we can, the body is on the altar. Now let me go and find out where every vestige of the flesh exists for some kind of immediate response to come. We can't have make-believe anymore. We can't face off with the detrimental stuff the devil is doing with make-believe responses. We gotta have a real, practical, hands-on response. We gotta lay hands on the sick and they recover. We gotta open blind eyes. We gotta really see the, raise, the dead raised. We gotta really see some kind of an ordinance go off down here that's going to explode on the scene. I was thinking the other day about this. As you walk around every day, like sitting here and walk, we're going to leave here, dismiss, walk downstairs, walk outside, get in your car, drive off. How, how a miracle really would affect an atmosphere. I mean, if you were in a place really, like we were at that funeral on Tuesday, if you really walk down front, take that flag off of that flag draped coffin, coffin because he was a veteran, he had a flag over his coffin. Throw the flag on the ground, they'd probably kill you for that. 
raised the lid of the coffin. Everybody was probably paused wondering what you were doing there for a minute. And loudly and, and with a loud voice say, Son, I say unto thee, arise. And the guy sits up. Now immediately, the whole atmosphere. See, that wouldn't be like an occurrence whereby everybody would be like, business as usual. You would get terror in there. You would get, there's no telling what you would get in there. Totally embalmed body with no blood in it. And the boy steps over the side of the coffin. You say, uh, get him something to eat and drink. Now the, the wife was there just mourning and crying a river a minute ago. Now, now the guy's standing, he walking over to his wife. Now, now this guy's graveyard dead and bombed. This is, the, this is what the Bible depicts, what I'm talking about. Jesus walked in and said, the girl's asleep, she's not dead. And they laughed at him to scorn. Next they know the girl walking out of the tent. Now, what's the environment like now? You know, when you really see something happen, as opposed to imagination and reading the Bible and fantasizing about it, we're walking around with all these Bible depictions you know, crossing the Red Sea and the water parting and axe handles floating and Ezekiel sees a wheel in the middle of the air. And all, you can go all these miracle, miraculous things in the Bible and in a practical way every day, you walk around and I walk around not expecting to see anything miraculous take place whatsoever. And we're drawn into, this is why I don't want to have any more stupid conversations. I'm not interested in anything but the supernatural and the miraculous. Because it ain't accomplishing nothing. I'm tired of talking to people about the same old dumb mess. Man, I'm sick of that. If you're not going to have a breakout of power and the miraculous, forget the whole thing. And let's just shut it down and go home. Somebody has to go to God with that kind of a Intensity will by look, either kill me or do something. Do one or the other. I'm not trying to be brave. I'm not trying to be bold nor brazen. But we need intervention. Look at these people. These people look terrible. They're in bad shape. And we backed up to the place where we accept the status quo and this is normal, this mess standing in front of us. Guy standing there with nap knots all on his head, covered in tattoos, two earrings on, looking like a monster mixed with a monkey. And we accept it as just being the way it is. Right. And everybody just walking around, praise the Lord, and this, this boob on this message is talking about, I just uh, accept people without approving of them, and I just love people. And everybody in the whole church looking like somebody from a, a cartoon, right. misfits, coops, and wackos, and he's talking that dumbed down, silly tripe he's saying. I mean, this is crazy. We've come into an, a place of a lunacy down here as normal. It's crazy. So why do we keep talking about the same stupid junk? Somebody got to extricate themselves from this dumb junk, get to God, and stay with God until he rained down power from on high. They stayed in the upper room until they went down with power from on high. And they came out on the street as a witness with a witness. It wasn't just talking. Them, these guys had power to do something in the atmosphere. The atmosphere changes with God intervening and something really happening. So if you step out there up to a casket with a dead man, You'd have to, first of all, have been told to do that by God. Anointed for God to do what he's about to do through you with no thought about the environment. See, this is not generated by self-effort and me trying to prove something. You really are a vessel fit for the master to use. God is a supernatural God from Genesis to Revelation. Miracles are normal to God. Miracles are like breathing to God. He just does them and doesn't affect him one way or the other. But look at the introduction of a miracle into time and space, what it does to the place. The whole place would be reverberating with this energy. They wouldn't know, really, they wouldn't know what to do. Some old dingbat pastor step up to you after you done raised a man from the dead, I dare you to speak. I dare you to say a word to me. Shut your mouth. And you seize the microphone. 
You got the atmosphere under your sway at that point. See, the credentials shifted from him to you. I don't care if you man, woman, chicken, cow. I don't care what you are, what species you are. The authority transferred to you because that guy cannot do what you just did. Then it's going, well, I don't think he was really dead in the first place. Uh, he's probably just in a coma. Uh, that probably went, see how that's going to start up. The guy was embalmed, man. He's, in a, he's not in a funeral here at live in a funeral and not being embalmed. He don't even have blood in him. We restored the blood flow in his body, man. What was he, type B? I don't care what anybody says. This is where this got to go. And what I'm saying is so fanatical to these folk that are nominal Christians. That what I'm saying is cult-like. I'm crazy. And this is Bible 101 I'm talking. You see, how the, the Bible has become so far removed from us that nobody even expects God to do anything from the pages of the Bible. This is, and what I'm saying is, you come to Dunamis Tabernacle to get equipped to go do what I just described. Oh, no, no, no. Because if I walk in there like that, I'll be ostracized and I'll be different from everybody. The devil has programmed through monarch mind control a herd mentality to make everybody what conformable to the collective and nobody steps outside the status quo so therefore no miracles happen. Miracles happen outside of the matrix and the status quo. You've got to be willing to be put out on the limb by yourself, the oddball, to perform a miracle. If you got the collective mind, the status quo thinking in you, you will never operate in God's power because I don't want to be seen as different. Because the first time you do a miracle, you'll be marked from that day forward as an alien. Something of, they wouldn't want to be around you. You wouldn't have many friends because they'd be afraid of you. Because you're not, you're from another place. You're not from here. You're an alien. You're an E.T. I hate to call you E.T., Dan, but you are E.T. <laughs> Phone home, Dan. Phone home. <laughs> but that's what would happen. People don't want to be marked as the outsider. They don't want to be different. They don't want to eat alone. They don't want to be narrowly put into this little microscopic place of identifying with Christ for real. That's why they broaden the spectrum whereby everybody's okay. We approve of everybody. Everybody's loved. Because I don't want to be seen as that weird one that really believes this. I'm not talking about vocalization. I'm talking about really having the power rest on you. And you walk in it everywhere you go. And you don't need anybody to validate you. You don't need anybody to sign off on your identity. You accept it in the beloved, which means you're from another world. Conformity to Christ means total isolation and rejection of the world. A crucified man is a dead man that's dead to the world. That's how you get this power. You've got to fast and pray your way into this kind of power. You've got to do, you got to do it for you. I mean, if you really want to see it come to pass for you, you've got to pay a personal, private price for public power. A personal Private price for public power. What are you doing in your private time? What does the Bible say? The law of reciprocity. Look, now look at this now. I brought it all the way down the line to right here to get to what I'm about to say now. We're talking about the law of reciprocity. We quoted it to you verbatim from the Bible a minute ago. Now, you want power? What did he say to do? If you sow to the Spirit, then from the Spirit you will reap eternal life. Zoe life, the powered up life. That means I got to cut it all off and sow to the Spirit in prayer, in fasting. I got to spend my time sowing to the Holy Ghost. And expecting from the Holy Ghost to get back a reciprocal return. I gave to you a body. 
I gave to you my time. I gave to you my words. I opened my mouth to you alone. I'm talking only to you. I'm not talking about this other extracurricular junk no more. That's where I'm at right now. I don't want to talk about this stuff no more. Let me sow to the spirit so I can reap from the spirit eternal life. So I can stop looking at a generation of young people go to hell and interdict their journey to hell and do something about it. You can change any environment. I don't care who it is, young or old, if you've got the goods. I'm not here to talk about Christ. I'm here to demonstrate Christ. I'm not here to talk to no Hebrew Israelite about no doctrine. You can't do what I can do. That's the determining factor now. Do you have the goods? Can you replicate Christ? Can you reproduce what he did? So to the spirit and a reciprocal return from the spirit is eternal life, resurrection life. This thing has to be brought to a head. All this stupid talking and debating and going back and forth with carnal minds. If I got a demon-possessed person that's got a carnal mind, what in the devil am I talking to them for? They're by nature, the Bible says, a child of wrath. I don't care if it's your kid, my kid, your boss, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, butcher, baker, candlestick maker. If they got a carnal man, you're talking to the enemy of God. They're demon possessed. And what happened in Mark chapter 5? Jesus cast the devil out of the gathering demoniac who was driven into madness. He's sitting and clothed in his right mind. And the next verse says, and the people were afraid. What's the revelation of that? The crazy man is now the normal man. They're afraid of a man brought back to sanity in his right mind. They didn't get afraid until the man was normal. So Lil Wayne is normal and you're crazy. Nicki Minaj is normal. You're insane. Trina is a woman of God. You're a kook. Oprah is normal. But you're crazy. What's her name? Eliana Van Zant. Was that her name? She's normal. She's making sense. What you're saying is just too far fetched. The supernatural, authoritative Word of God on display through the power of the Holy Ghost is strange and weird. But a psychologist or a psychiatrist is normal. To accept your sin and your sickness and disease and infirmity, that's normal. So that's you are just being persecuted and you accept it lovingly and you just, no, you need to be seeking God about change. This ain't normal. I don't, I'm not accepting anything. We got to push the envelope. Something's not adding up. I'm reading this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It don't turn out like this in the Bible. We got to put the brakes on this Mack truck, pushing the brake through the floorboard. I mean, those tires are burning. You know, a Mack truck, you hit, that, you hit those brakes. If those Jake brakes kick in, it's going to be burning rubber down the highway because you're hitting that Mack truck brake. And that thing, you got, it'll catch on fire when you hit them lock them brakes in. The thing needs to be brought to a full stop because this is not right. This religious monster got to be addressed. This religious trash don't have nothing to do with God. We're wasting time talking about junk all day long. I, I need to go to your house and blow up your computer so you'll stay off Facebook. Blow up your iPhone. Because you sit on Facebook all day long with that dumb junk. Everybody says something, you got a comment for it and got some kind of response. No power to do anything about anything. It's time to do what Jehoshaphat said. It's time to sanctify a fast and seek the Lord. Because until I see the book of Acts take place in my life, there's no assurance of what I am. You don't know what you got. If these signs follow them that believe and the signs ain't following us, then what are we? 
can we qualify as a believer? When the man already quantified a believer as somebody that the signs follow. Where are the signs? It says in Psalm 78, as I believe it says, we see not our signs. This ain't even, this ain't even coming to the Bible. This is not even normal to the Bible to be like this. A Christian full of the Holy Ghost and fire baptized and settling for not even second best, but third or fourth best. The back, back of the bus. You riding on the, 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 the tail end of the bus. You outside the bus chasing the bus. What kind of mess is this? Your problem ain't with the devil or the flesh or down. Your problem is with heaven. And this power poured out through us to set a captive free. These folk are chained and bound. We're living in a generation of gathering demoniacs. Read Mark chapter 5. This is the whole generation. You can walk outside right now and see a guy with looking like tree limbs growing out of his head. Tree, tree limbs. Walking down the street, crazy. Tatted it all up, believing he's normal. Just as crazy, he's a gathering the money at. Invisible chains binding his soul. And we have come just to conversate with the gathering. Accept the gathering, eat dinner with the gathering. Man, you let you, you set that gathering free and watch the environment. Say Lil Wayne for real, and Lil Wayne sit there clothing his right mind with a haircut. And a normal guy saying, you know what, I'm, I pray the Lord I got saved. He, this sister came by my house, prayed for me, cast that devil out of me. I thank God that I'm back in my right mind. And I want to repent for all that cussing and all that filth that I put out there in the airways. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life making amends for what I did to ruin these young people's lives. I mean, guy standing in a three-piece suit and a tie, Lil Wayne. No longer Lil Wayne, he's reverted back to, what's his real name? Who? Dwayne Carter. I'm Dwayne Carter now. I don't even know who Lil Wayne is. Joke was crazy. Whoever was crazy. Lil, Lil Wayne was crazy. I'm Dwayne Carter. So look, they said Dwayne Carter was smart in school too. He said he was a smart guy. But Lil Wayne became his alter ego because that's the demon. We're walking amongst the demons, freaking out people, and just now passively coexisting with them. And the devil pe preaches coexistence and tolerance. I ain't tolerating nothing. It's time to lock up somewhere until God's hand is forced. We need to, it's like that unrighteous judge. Because of your continual coming, somebody, somebody up here gonna do something for me. I ain't looking at TV, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not eating anything to something. I'll die out here in this desert. Somebody up here is gonna talk to somebody for me or some kind of way somebody got to say something to somebody. Somebody got to break out. This is a dying planet. These folks have gone insane. The reprobate mind has been reached. We need an answer from heaven. This ain't no time to play around, and this is not for the faint of heart. Tomorrow we begin 11-day fast, May 15th through the 25th. A week later, we'll be down in Florida. Some of you might want to fast right on through into to the conference. This don't make no difference now. You're at the point now, you got nothing to lose. If you never eat again, you might have eaten too much. You've eaten enough up to this point to, la to last you the rest of your life anyway. Amen. This thing is critical. The situation is critical. And it's time for an impossible missions force to be raised up to confront this thing. The law of reciprocity. You sow to the spirit, then from the spirit, from that unseen realm of the spirit, I got to reap resurrection, eternal life. And embodied in that life is power to do the works of the ministry. You can't do the work of any ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, you know what the Bible calls it? A dead work. Man, we need that resurrection life. We need that resurrection power. We need eternal life. We need to see God move in Jesus' name. If you would, stand to your feet, please. By way of the internet, if you're on live stream, stand to your feet in your own den. Stand up in your living room. Stand up in your kitchen. I don't care where you are. Your bedroom. Stand up in the bathtub if you got the, the computer playing in your bathroom. Stand up in your bathtub. Man, it's time to get out of here, man. Enough is enough. Good night. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, God, this thing has been brought to a critical place. 
And this is a final conclusion that's got to be wrought. We're not going to keep coming up here in this silly hotel room talking to folks over this live stream and making MP3 tapes. This ain't it. And this is not what we're looking for. We're not satisfied to hang around with the same old church junk every Sunday and Wednesday night. It's time to move on across this river into a place called the promised land, which to us, us is a land of promises. God, in Jesus' name, if this is not the promise that you gave us in the New Testament, why should we be satisfied with this? We were promised the promise of the Spirit to do something about the devil, the flesh, and this worldly intrusion upon our lives. Children held captive as lesbians and homosexuals. We got the church invaded with sickness, disease, and infirmity. The church, we're trying to heal somebody and we are incapacitated. There's nothing right about this. This don't even look right. God, in Jesus' name, move whatever is in the way as we present ourselves this week and next week in a fast. Cutting off everything that is contrary to the word and mind of God and rain down another life. I don't care how weird we look. I don't care what people think about us. I don't care what people say about us. I don't care how much I don't fit in. This thing can be tapped into. Out of our own bellies flowing a river of living water. This thing is real. We've got to see this thing tapped into and the flow released. These people in the streets, around this city and around the world, are dying. They're dying. We're seeing the people lose their minds in real times. We're looking at family members, kids and family members lose their minds. They're going insane looking at them. They've changed tremendously over the last five years. You're watching them go insane in real time. And you're saying, can I find somebody that can interdict? You're looking for a vessel through which you can pour yourself. The Bible says we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth our fruit in our season. And the leaves on these trees are for the healing of the nations. This thing got to come up and out of us. If you would, raise your hands and pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name. I'm volunteering for this. I'm sick and tired of the devil's mess. I'm sick of my mind being distracted by the devil's mess. I'm responding to the devil. I'm talking to the devil. I'm emotionally distraught, distraught because of the devil. Going back and forth with the devil trying to figure out the devil I'm sick of it I'm ready to move on to another place now if there be any righteousness if there be any truth if there be any mercy move me to another place where my mind cannot be intruded upon so I can have Christ live through me. God, those miracles, those gifts of the Spirit are part of my inheritance. The fruit born out through spiritual intercourse with Christ are what I am. The power, the power is what I project. Is what I, project. I, lay I lay hold on that with every fiber of my being. Let me go. Let me go. Free, me. Free me. Break emotional chains. Break emotional chains. Well, everybody down here everybody down. so I can be a vessel oh, fit for the master to use. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray the Holy Ghost come upon these gathered here and by way of the internet. Let the power of the Holy Ghost do what a human being can't do. It's time for resurrection power to take over where man has failed. God, in each one of us, there is embedded a treasure that you have placed in us through which you can pour yourself. God, in the name of Jesus, bring these words alive. And let them take hold of her in the name of Jesus. Let resurrection power come alive and move her into another place. A young girl can be a witness. Stir up the gifts within her in the name of Jesus. And let power, power, Holy Ghost power, baptize and fill her with the Holy Ghost and power. In Jesus' name. Let this word come alive in the name of Jesus. We need some young folks on the field, on the playing field, on the battlefield. Break every hole right now in Jesus' name. Every fear, every doubt, every unbelief, I purge her soul in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, take her over to the other side. In Jesus' name. It's resurrection power. Let resurrection power. Resurrection power. Who knows whether you've come to the kingdom. For such a time as this. You might just be the one. To change nations. You might just be the one. To affect millions. Who knows. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name in Jesus name God every yoke on her life in the name of Jesus every demon that has tried to bind her I break the power of those demons right now all religion I expel it from my life right now in Jesus name I cast it from her as an abomination God the Bible says the gathering the money that was sitting and clothed in his right mind God in the name of Jesus I reverse everything the devil's done to him. I break the stronghold of the devil. Witchcraft that has bound her mind. That witch that put it on you. I take it off of you. Right now. Take it off of you. That chain on her mind. I break that chain. Break that chain. Break that chain. Break that chain. You're my property. The devil's a liar. I break that chain. Break that chain. Break that chain. Break that chain. I go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Break that chain. Break this chain. Yes, Lord. You're my property. The devil is a liar. I break that chain. Yes, Lord. Anything placed in her, I take it out of her right now. Take it out of her. Take it out of her. Take it out of her. Body fluids. Break that chain. Yes, Lord. Menstrual blood. Break that chain. Every yoke wrapped around her. Break that chain. Insanity, break that chain. Incapacitation, break that chain. Slavery, break that chain. Rejection, break that chain. Uncleanness, break that chain. Break these chains. Break these chains. Break these chains. Break these chains. Demonic nest, I expel you. Jezebel, I expel you. Witchcraft, I expel you. Manipulation and control, I expel you. Domination, I expel you. Fantasy, I expel you. Masturbation, I expel you. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Break these chains. 
I mean, let resurrection power come alive. Don't have time to think about it. Yes, Drive them off. Yes, Lord. Drive yes, these Lord. devils off in Thank Jesus' Lord. name. We need vessels fit for the master to use. Yes, Lord. Down in the spine, break these chains. Yes, Down in the sexual organs, break these chains. Yes, in the mind, break yes, these chains. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oils, Jesus. powders. Jesus. Talisman, Jesus. incantations, Jesus. Yes, Lord. break these chains. Yes, Lord. Break You'll them. never leave me. Break Jesus. these chains. Jesus. You'll never be anything without me. Jesus. Break these break chains. It, break, it, break it, break it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, go down deep yes. and bring up from the root yes, that Lord. strong man. Yes, Lord. Strong man. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you that governs Thank this nest. Come up out of there in Jesus' name. Come up out of there in Jesus' name. Come up out of there in Jesus' name. Come up from the root in Jesus' name. A tree is known by its fruit. No, devil, you got to go in the name of Jesus. Come up from the root. All the, Come up from the root. Jesus. Everybody she has a soul tie with every person. If you came in through the soul ties with other people, I expel you in Jesus. Come up out of there. Come up out of there. Come up out of there. I join myself to somebody. I join myself to a woman. I join myself to a man. I join myself to the demons. Come up out of there. Come up out of there. If you're in through a soul tie. If you're through a blood coming with a human, come up out of there. Come up out of there in Jesus' name. God, send your power coursing through her body in the name of Jesus. Break these yokes. Break these yokes. You embed it down in the spine. Kundalini force. Come up from the base of that spine. That insane spirit. Come up out of there. I'm going to drive her crazy. Jesus. I'm going to drive out of her mind. Jesus. I'm going to make her lunatic. I'll Jesus. kill her. I'll Jesus. kill her before I leave. Jesus. Get up out of there. In Jesus, Jesus name. name. The blood of Jesus. Get out of there. Thank you, Lord. In Thank Jesus, you, Lord. Name. Thank you. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. All these crazy, insane spirits. God, I come against the spirit of insanity right now. They either try to drive people insane. They're going to lose their mind behind this stuff. All insane spirits, I curse you and command you to turn loose these people right now. Insanity right now in the name of Jesus. Anything torment her mind. Anything talking to her mind. Anything trying to abed in her mind. I curse anything that lives in the mind. God, all mental spirits, religious spirits, <coughs> try these things off of people, God, because you can do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And set their minds free. In Jesus' name. Sick of the devil. The devil is insane himself and going to drive somebody else crazy. You're sick of the devil. Jesus' name. Right now, God, in Jesus' name. The spirit of rejection right now. I don't care how far back it goes, rejection of all kinds. From her upbringing, from her family life, from her life in the world, dealing with guys, rejection right now. I put my hand on rejection, that one demon spirit. I'm commanding you, all rejection, to lift off of her right now. In Jesus name lift off of her. If you are a rejected spirit of all types. I'm not naming all of you. If you come un under the heading of rejection. I lift that thing off of her right now. God send power through her soul. And lift rejection off of her soul right now. Word spoken. What she thought about herself. 
what she hasn't done or couldn't do, where she didn't measure up and be good enough to, for something, I break the power of this thing right now. Yes, Lord. You will let her go. You will let her go in Jesus' name. God break these strongholds on her soul. On her soul. Break these holes. Yes, break these holes off of her. Yes, I mean deeply embedded. Rejection. Yes, Fear of being rejected. You just causing her personality to be skewed and a little bit off. I curse you at the root right now in Jesus' name. Lift off of yes, her. Lord. Come up out of there right now in Jesus' name. Rejection. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Rejection. Loose her right now. Yes, Lord. Loose her right now. Turn a loose of her right now in the name of Jesus. God, send your power and drive off rejection. Yes, Lord. Rejection from a father. Rejection from a mother. Rejection from men. Guys that treat her like dirt in the street. That trashed her out. I'll break that power right now. Yes, Lord. I'll accept you if you do these dastardly deeds I want you to do. But outside of that, you're nothing. Self-hatred. What I made myself into. I'll break the power of all those things. The devil is a liar. False personalities. Jezebel. In the name of Jesus. I break the power of Jezebel's witchcraft in that Jezebel spirit. I break the yoke of that thing. God lift this thing off of her in the name of Jesus. Manipulation. Seduction. I break the power of seduction right now. That's how I survived out there, man. If I could seduce some boy, I could rule this place. I break the power of seduction right now in Jesus' name. Break this yoke of seduction, allure, enchantment, cunning artificing, bewitchment. Root it all up. God, slam it to this nest and root them up out of there. Body idolatry right now. Body idolatry. I break the power of that thing. Break that yoke. Yes, Lord. Throw a little body on them here or there. I can rule this place. I break that power right now. Break, break that yoke right now. Come up out of there. Come up out of there. Come on up out of there. No, you don't. Get up out of there. Get up out of there. Come up from the root. Attraction. I like them looking at me. Come on up out of there. Come on. Come up from the root. Man, we got to have some clean vessels, God. We got to have some vessels fit for the master to use. We got to have another generation of powerhouses. We got to have some folk that can project this power into another person's life. We don't need any cholesterol. We don't need any blockages. Break these yokes. I mean, go down deep and root up these things. Go down deep and root them up in the name of Jesus. Come on up out of there. Come up out of there. You embedded around her spine. You embedded in her sexual organs. Come up out of there right now. Come on, wherever you built a nest, I break up that nest right now in Jesus' name. Set her free. Send your power and set her free. This thing is not by might. It's not by power. But it's by your spirit, said the Lord of hosts. It's time for a new generation, God. Loose her. Loose her right now. Loose her right now. 
Yes, Lord. That which is divided on her by a lesbian witch. That lesbian witch that put that yoke on her. I break that lesbian power right now. I'm going to make her my personal property. The devil is a liar. Come up out of there right now. Come up out of there right now. That lesbian chain tied around her soul. I break that chain to that lesbian right now. I break that chain. The desires of the lesbian. The wishes of the lesbian. The fantasies of the lesbian. I break that yoke right now. Come up out of there. You are my property. My property. I'm going to break up your marriage. I'm going to break up your home. I'm going to take you from your husband. The devil is a liar. Break that yoke. Go back into a childhood. And that marking on her soul. That marked her for lesbianism. I break that yoke from her family. That inherited yoke of lesbianism. Whoredoms. Fantasy. Pornography. I break that yoke right now. What a mama was. What a daddy was. What a grandmother was. What a grandfather was. All generations in the past. That marked her. I break that power. Break that power off of them. Don't let these people go one step further, God. Carrying these images. Carrying these markings. Carrying these demons downstream. It's time to break up fallow ground. Break up fallow ground and set them free. And restore their souls to normal. The Bible says you restore our souls. That's what it's time. It's time for a restoration of the soul. God. Can't keep walking around in this. We got to move on to higher ground in Jesus name. In Jesus name. God, I'm asking you to send fresh fire, fresh wind blowing over these folks. Send the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost and fire. Burn up the chaff. Burn out everything that's not of God. Restore and refresh the soul. In Jesus' name. Release the flow of the Spirit, God. Because this is a dry and thirsty land. And we need help. We need help from an ever-present help in the time of need. Do it for your glory. Do it for your honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's going to wrap it up for today. Remember, 11-day fast starting tomorrow, 15th through the 25th. But keep going if you don't want to stop. Go right into the conference, which is a week later, right into June the 1st. It's time to move on to another place. We're not going to just keep standing here giving messages. Man, no, who wants to keep doing this? It's time to go somewhere else with this. Time for God to move in a supernatural way and raise up another kind of people. Remember the conference, June 1st through June 4th. Sign up and register right now at www.omegaministries.org. Click, and, uh, click on the, the navigational tool that will take you through the registration process and then call the resort to reserve your room. Discount rates are still available for the resort rooms. Remember Dunamis Tabernacle, $103,000 in the building fund, pressing toward a million dollars to put boots on the ground. It's all about interdiction and vessels that have been cleansed and purged to be refilled with the Holy Ghost to do the job. This is not your grandmama's church. Support it. www.omegaministry.org. Click on support, then donate. And finally, prayer. Every night, 9 o'clock, we're going to be praying heavy during this fast. Every night, 9 o'clock, stop spectating and watching messages and listening to MP3 tapes. We're in this thing for real because we're in a dire situation. The devil's coming in heavy and he's not taking any survivors. Every night, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 641-715-3670. The access code is 409-367. We got to move to another place. We got to be in it to win it. The law of reciprocity, so to the spirit of the spirit, reap eternal life. And it's time to reap now, 
so we can demonstrate Christ on the street. See you Wednesday Bible study back here, Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Prepare for the conference. The countdown is heavy now because it's the 15th of the month tomorrow. That's going to put us 16 days out. Pack your stuff starting tomorrow. Get your bags packed. Tell your job you won't be there. And you don't plan on returning back the same as you left. It's time for a new breed of Christians. See you next week. Have a blessed week. And for whatever you do, stay out of the devil's filthy matrix.